Welcome, welcome, and good morning. We have to do some cleaning before we do anything. So we're gonna clean up the Traeger. I gotta clean up the extra large Bing Green Egg, get it all ready to go for all the stuff that's happening today. And uh, Caitlin will be out here around 10 o'clock and we're going to take care of this pig together, get it onto the grill, and then she'll be back on at her normal time at 12 o'clock. nah. Morning, morning, morning. But I will show you the pig. Bam, guys. It is a 39 pound suckling pig. A little, little bit bigger than I asked for, but that's perfectly fine. It is missing one ear, maybe due to something or a tag possibly. But Kayla and I will take care of this. We'll get it all seasoned up. We'll get it onto the Traeger once it's all cleaned and we'll get this going. So I'll bring you over to the Traeger. And we are going to start. So the first thing that I had to do was we had to clean out the drip tray. It told me the fat level was high, so I'm gonna clean it. I've been using the same tray since I've got the Traeger, so I think it was time to change out to a new tin foil today. So there's a bottom piece underneath here. Slide that out. Put the new tray in. Has a little fire guard to go on top. Put that into the slot. That goes in. And we're closed back up. That was a nice simple task. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, now we'll take the grate out of the Traeger. Move you guys a little closer. Okay. So, okay. maybe a little farther away so I can actually take the grate out. Great comes out. This piece comes out. And now you can see the firebox and what we have to clean. All that dust and such has to come out of there. maybe mute it for the time being because i will be using a shop vac here to suck the rest of this out so headphones speakers you've all been warned i am going to use the shop vac
Okay, that's the Traeger all cleaned out. Put it all back together. Morning, morning, friends. We do that so you don't start any fires today. Uh, we also do that so it has proper airflow today. Really. And good even cut. So we're going to grab some tin foil at this point as well so I can cover everything. Okay. I'll hold the thing. Yeah, it'll just sit there on the hook. Little bit flat. No, wait, no, you gotta do it the upgrade. Up. Oh, nope, we're happy. It goes under. Alright, you do the rest. I think it's going to take seven hours. Six to seven. Yeah, that's why we're getting it on right away. Six to seven. They're asking 12 to 14, so no. they're already prepared. <laughs> <laughs> if it's 12 to 14, everyone's not having food today. Crazy. I didn't yeah. know that was a special spot. One more down. Okay, so next we gotta clean the grate a bit or we're okay with that? Um uh, no, I'm gonna clean the grate a bit. So this guy. Swap out the power from the shop vac to the trigger, please. Yes. Okay. So we're going to start heating up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. That will probably be the temperature of the entire cook. I've already cleaned the fire pots, don't yell at me. Ignite. Thanks for putting this on the big screen, Mish. Mish is gonna read her book while she watches. That sounds like a nice Sunday. Yeah. Okay. And mama. Oh my god, a 40 month resub theory. Wow. From Mama Reagan. That's just insane. This is why we do these things. Wasp's already bad, I'm gonna turn on the thing today. Yep, get it going. I'm not having any of this. Where's that? Thank you so much, Mama, for that. Hope you're doing well, you and Papa and the fam. That's a hype. Let me get hypes in chat. <laughs> 40 months hey. in a row. That's a clean Traeger, ready to go. That's a nice looking grill. Okay, now over to the piggy. 
Now Wait. we got the piggy. I was going to say, let's just lay it out on the table. You even beat me to it. Yep. Put the paper down. Yep. It's nice and clean. Okay, I'm going to put my apron on. Cheers, friends. Ah! Coffee. <laughs> Finn. <laughs> Finn loves babies. So Finn may or may not have taken the entire liter of fluff to work. Finn took all the fluff? I know White Dove. It was hard yesterday too. Even the people in the butcher shop, it was a bit hard. It's kind of awkward. Okay, so fat drippings. Here's the thing about like a young pig is they have not lived a long life. They have not had a ton of food and like given all this delicious stuff over the years. So we're thinking this is about three months old. Is that accurate? Yeah, about that. Yeah, about three months old. Yeah, your mic on? I, I don't. I was just going to go off of this, but I can switch it if you want. How uh, do we just, feel? How do you guys feel? Is the, is the audio quality okay for current, or should we switch to the other mic? Or does it... Okay, so yeah, oh, because this is young. If we switch the scene, we can't use oh. the other audio. <laughs> Sam's comes through better than mine. Okay, that's fine. Probably because okay. of where I'm you're closer. at. I'm yeah. closer. Okay. So yeah, there shouldn't be actually a ton of fat at all, which is why you have to cook this so gently so that you don't dry out the meat. So we don't have to work as hard to make it tender and juicy the same way like we would have to work many many hours to make a brisket very delicious right so we'll probably bring this internal temp up to 195 190 in the hams and shoulders so 190 fahrenheit in the thickest part here 190 fahrenheit in the thickest part in the shoulder and then we're just going to prep it up so it's going to get cooked it's going to be like laying flat so the head's going to be here we'll lay the front legs beside and then the back legs will be scooted up as well, just to be able to fit it on the Traeger. There's a couple different ways to do it. We found, or we think that this one will probably be for the first time. So first step is just to unwrap it, I think. Yep. She has one I actually wanted to make a couple of The first thing we're gonna do, I don't really want to hold it, if I'm being honest. We just gotta lay it out, guys, and then open this up and kind of see the surface area that we have to be able to season it. This is how they wrapped it for us from the butcher. Not, not really the best, if I'm being honest. <laughs> okay, so let's see how they have prepped this for us. By just kind of opening it up. So you can see here, they put the weight on it. Is a 39 pounds. We asked for 30 pounds, so it's a bit bigger than we 30 to 35 asked for. expected, but that's okay. That's why we have lots of people coming over today. So there's a couple of things. Do we split this open, or is it going to like split itself? It, it does. Okay. You'll have to go like just up here with your boring yeah, here yeah. and here. And then so, it looks like they've already taken 
care of the silver skin that's on the back of the ribs? I, I was just going to start from this end and kind of go forward how we're going to clean it. Sure. So one of the first things that we saw on YouTube was you want to kind of clean away some of this extra skin around. This is a ham, right? This is the leg of the pork. And if you clean away that, then you're able to season it more. Otherwise, you can't really season inside, and that's like a big chunk of meat that you definitely want seasoned. So it takes some of that out. The belly is all pretty nice and clean. You can maybe take away some of this silver skin that you guys can see there, because that's just going to stop the seasoning from permeating, and it might get <clears throat> a little bit papery. And yeah, some of that connective tissue maybe as well. And then working up towards this way, I don't know if you can see as well, kind of, is we'll clean away some of this connective stuff from around the shoulder and open that up. And then around the head by the jowls, there's a couple of glands. Thanks, Sam. So we'll clean out some of these glands because they're not super tasty to eat at the end anyway. So kind of just take away anything that we don't want there at the end of the cook and that's really it so not too much prepping seems like the butcher did a pretty good job already there's no kidneys in them yeah they've already taken out all of the offal so i'll just grab my boning knife i'm gonna get you to just and away we go what just hold up the head maybe a little bit no it's missing an ear what happened? It might have had a tag or something. Okay. Don't, it's not anything bad. One more. <laughs> and I will say, guys, like, as far as me, yes, I eat meat, but, like, even this is hard to prepare, and I think this is super important. If you don't feel comfortable doing this kind of stuff with meat i mean you have to learn to respect the animal use every part of it and go about it that way we're not just cooking this as a showpiece and being like yeah we did this no we're actually cooking it to feed people and also teach people how to do it for themselves because i know a lot of you do pig roasts the the guts always go away because you can't leave the guts inside it'll it'll, it'll spoil the meat so guts get cleaned out right away. You might get kidneys, you might not. Do you want to crack this hip bone more? Like I can see it's already cracked a bit. Uh, or is it gonna be fine? No, no, I think don't think you'd do any more of okay. that. You just expose the ham a little bit more and take the fat the okay. skin off. You wanna come in just a little bit closer? Yep. Thank you for the money moy. Okay, perfect. So I'm just gonna grab this little stringy bit here. Kind of keep it tight. And we're just going to run our boning knife a little bit farther up the skin. It's very soft, so it does not take much at all to do that. And then we're also being very careful to not nick any of the actual meat that we're going to be using. So now that opened up more surface area from the ham, you can see where you can sneak some more season in. And then in one of the videos we are watching, we also have a really good recipe linked. He said to take away some of this membrane too. around with trying to clean that silver off like I said we're just trying to open this up a bit more get some seasoning on so we can do the other side too it's just laying a bit more flat and that's okay so kind of grab this little nugget again yeah that's really good and we can come back a bit this way I can see there's a couple of glands here and stuff so if you want to, you can clean that out, up to you. You said you want to use these nuts and ours? Yeah, today for seasoning, we're going to do a blend of a pecan 
rub that has a little bit of sweetness to it and then our own pork rub which is salt pepper cracked coriander garlic and paprika do a little bit more here thank you white dove <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't really had my coffee yet today. I'm a bit froggy. Okay. That looks good. That looks great, yep. Okay. <clears throat> I'm dying here. I'll be okay though. Okay, so nothing else to clean inside of here, right? Mm, no, nope, nothing else. Because we eat. They say that we eat the meat from the outside in when right. it's done. So bring the camera over here, please. Yep. Maybe come on the other side if you want. Perfect. So a bit of this, he said? Just so it lays more flat. One second, guys. Just trying to get the better angle. Sammy's getting those views. You already have a liter of coffee, Annie, but you need more. It might be one of those days. Uh, just a little bit here, I think. And he was just splitting it open so it would open up more. Okay, that's what I thought. It's like, you can kind of around that little yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like that. Yeah, and then you were able to... Then you can move this yeah. around a bit more and season inside of the shoulder a touch. Yeah. That's where you just went down just a little bit. Nice. So we can sprinkle seasoning inside of there. Yep. That's Get good. A bit more. There we go. That'll be good for us to position it as well. And then I'll do the other side as well. Yep. See now how that leg's just staying open for you? Yeah. You're about the same spot, yeah. Yeah, there's just a bit more stuff. Yep. Comes up that way. And if you find that there's like anything in your way, you can just get rid of that. Yep, there we go. Keep opening that up again. That's good. And then just a little bit more. Just kind of put it this way, I think, again. It doesn't want to stay fully open. I'm just going to grab a couple of the glands from inside. Yeah. Nice work. Just a small little pile of stuff. Because, yeah, that's the getting into the jowl and the cheeks. So we don't want to mess with that. Okay, next up, we season. We season. Okay. So I, 
or you're gonna grab the seasoning and I won't wash my hands. I already have the seasoning. That? Perfect. The cheeks are very nice and high cooking girl. When you smoked whole hogs, always head off and got told every year the head on was so gross, so we left it on one year. <laughs> They're so good though. It's like the best part. I'll show you a little bowl so you can just sprinkle. What about the Cambro thing? Oh mix, yeah! All I did last time was mix half and half, just yeah. put a piece of plastic over and shake it together. Yep. And then away we go. Am I gonna make a stock? I mean, all I really took off was that mama. And if I'm being honest, glands, not really the best thing to use for a stock. Cause they can sometimes get like a bitter taste to them or an off taste, so not the best. If you want to, go for it, but just so you know, it's not the best. Head cheese from this, I mean, not from this pig, I would say. So there's nothing really to use. And I mean, not how we're cooking it today either. But on like a regular pig's head, yes. <clears throat> so Sammy's just being the rub mix master right now. Here's our typical pork rub, right? Salt, pepper, cracked coriander, paprika, garlic. And then we're sneaking in, just for a bit of sweetness, some D's nuts. D's nuts! Hold it up a bit closer. There you go. And we have the Traeger Timberline 1300. Okay, thank you. It's all mixed up proper? Yep. Sweet! Okay, so there's our mixing. We're gonna use our Cambro shaker. Yeah, meat charge. Hopefully not too many lumpies here, and I guess we'll start Doesn't matter where from you the start. front, yep. or? You can start from the front. Okay, you want to get a bit closer again, please, with the view? Okay, one second before you start. And he says one second before we start. That's a good one. You're gonna Just hold get into that side. <laughs> Brand, Brandon's <laughs> gonna take some photos of us. Doing Sweet. It. Okay. So just a gentle, even sprinkle all over. Really it's pretty heavy. Yeah, really making sure that we get into all the crevices. Just gonna be like <laughs> and rub it in there. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> that worked so well. Bit more there. A bit more in the cheekies. Oh, choo, choo, choo. Maybe we'll just try and lay it to this one side so I can get yep. on the ribs. Don't do it too fast so the rub actually sticks while you're doing it as well. Because we can't season any of this from the outside, which is, I mean, a little bit tough, right? That's typically how you season all the meat that you cook, is the outside where you're going to be searing it, stuff like that, right? But we want to keep the skin for this as clean as possible. 
Maybe a little bit heavier up top here. And we don't want to create like salt pockets either because then that doesn't season evenly. But as I'm rubbing, it's sticking really nice. Good. Maybe a bit more in this one. And then maybe we'll just let this sit for a moment for everything to really adhere yep. onto there. Nice job. Thank you. One whole hog done by Kate. I think the rubies are good. Yeah. You don't need now much of your spice. Moist, yeah. And especially because that touch of sugar in the pecan rub really helps it stick on, right? Once it gets wet. Awesome. Okay. Well done. Good job. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I'll come back. No, just nope. wait. We're gonna put it on together and get it done properly. So I don't want to get this. Oh, on the then go ahead. Though. Go ahead. You need me to open the door? Just waiting for Caitlin to come back with her hands washed and then we're going to put the pig on the grill. You're like an angel in the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it fitting on it? <laughs> oh no, it fits perfectly. You'll see. You'll no see. problem. Estimated cooking time. Uh, probably five o'clock. That's not a cooking time. I'd be like a chef. Re retry that answer. What time is it Sam, right now? How long on the suckling pig? Probably seven hours. Yeah. Okay. So seven hours. <laughs> like Sam, how long on this linguine pasta? Oh, uh, it's almost there. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> How long will the pasta? Five minutes, chef. Yes. Yes, chef. <laughs> Until it's done. Exactly. Until I'm happy with it. The probe works. You're really giving the whole view there, hey? What? <laughs> Cook it till it's done. Oh, we'll be able to use that command today for sure. Okay. It's ready? Yeah, everything's ready to go. We okay. gotta get the pig on the grill. Okay. We're gonna move this out of the way. little 
up and then we'll need a cloth just to wipe. Yep. And that's how that fits on. I hear you, Dr. Voltaic, and I mean, no one's making you watch this. So if you don't feel right about it, we've already had a chat about how we feel about this yesterday on stream, but I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Not really a cool thing to come in and say that on someone's stream. This guy will go into the shoulder. Okay. And then we just have to wait for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we'll have to maybe like wet it a bit. Okay. It got a bit sooty. Okay. It's on. What is the purpose of the foil? Good question. So the foil just protects those really delicate pieces from burning as it cooks over that period of time. There's not a lot of meat in the ears or around the snout, right? And because they're kind of like on the outskirts of where we're cooking, they have a tendency to burn up. It's not really that we're going to be eating those pieces too much anyways, but just for presentation purposes, it really helps. Uh, we can compare that to if you've ever put a little bit of foil around the outside of your pie crust because it's getting too dark. Same thing. And hi, Titan. And I was going to say, like, you'll probably never see someone deal with a suckling pig in a more respectful way than how I was just treating this piece of meat. Yeah, all good. Okay, so we can switch up this view then. Get it right on the. Yeah, you were talking to the Traeger. Because yep. we'll show rub in it. Yep. So we just have a wet cloth, is one thing that we want to do really quick before we say, yeah, this is good to go and cook. We're just going to wipe the outside of the skin for the same purpose is it'll just kind of cook more even as it kind of touched the grill grate a bit so it got a couple lines on it. And then any of the residual rub that maybe fell off as well. This is what I haven't seen on other videos though. Like the American videos, they don't have this stamp on the pigs. It's a Canadian thing. So I don't thing. know if it means that we have higher quality. Yes. Probably. Well, it's all depending on the age and where the, not the quality, but the, the practices that they Yes. Do. Canada stamps everything. Okay. That is it, I think. I don't like, think I can get more. This is Alberta approved. Yeah. Right, stamped. If you got another pig that wasn't Alberta approved, it's not. You can sell this at a restaurant. Yes. Uh, one other thing just to talk about real quick, the way that we position this, hottest part of the grill is on the left, which is why we put the hams there, which are the biggest part of the pig. It'll take the longest to cook. Start your hams on basically over the firebox, and then we can rotate a couple times throughout to make sure it's even. For now, 
we're gonna close this up and we'll probably check on it in an hour. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you good? I got one more. <laughs> okay. And the grill is at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I don't even, those types of people guys, I don't even ask them if they eat animals because it's just not worth it. They've already, they're set on their opinion. There's no convincing them otherwise and that's fine. And that goes for like anyone else of our typical viewers. If you guys don't feel comfortable hanging around today, that is a-okay with me. And that's another thing that like I'm pushing myself to be better about as well, Feral Butch, is like if you're uh, eating meat, you have to be comfortable with these uncomfortable kind of situations. It's about showing respect to the animal, really being thankful for the opportunity to get that food in your life. And also cooking it properly so that it is delicious, is cooking with love, not just throwing it on there and like making it taste like crap at the end of the day. That's not what we're about. It already smells good. Welcome in, Wilson. Wilson, this is just for you since you just got in. A quick... That's it. farmer's market earlier this week on Tuesday and picked up so many amazing veggies that we are going to be cooking on the big green egg today right because well our oven is taken up by a pig so we have to use another source of cooking so the rest of the sides are going to be cooked all over charcoal we're going to do foil potatoes we have fresh corn to grill green beans yellow and purple cauliflower if you've ever seen that before and maybe we'll make a little sauce of some sort i love to hear that so much rose thank you for sharing that story with everyone apprenticing as a butcher one of the parts is going to a farm and learning how to slaughter right but like you say every part of the animal is used it's not thrown away which is very important have used a wire basket for veggies on the grill it works good Annie if you want to have them pre-cut up right without them falling through the grates it does work pretty good and today Wilson we have I think 12 people are going to be 
getting in on this pig all together. We're kind of doing like an end of summer barbecue for the day as well, I think. Safely, of course. And then the yellow and purple cauliflower, I don't think they really taste any different, just they're a really beautiful color. <laughs> We're eating the rainbow today. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Feral Butch. I'm with you on that. Uh, the butcher shop that we picked this up from is widely known in the area. They've been around for many, many years, like since before I was even born. And I would have to say they know what they're doing. It took, what, about two weeks or so yeah, of planning to of get order. this? Yeah. It hung for a week proper, yeah. so the meat's going to be great. Yeah, the farm from this pig is not very far away from here. Are the butchers here better than on the island? I cannot really give a proper answer for that yet, Annie, because we've not worked too much yet with Darcy's, but so far we've been really enjoying our experience. I hope they pop in today. I told them about the show and what we were doing, so I'm really, I'm really hoping they come in. One thing I will say that they are better just off the bat from the island is they're able to get a lot more different game meat in, which I am excited to be cooking with you guys soon on the show as well. Yeah, they had elk, bison, uh, yak, and one more there. Just a venison, maybe? Maybe just a venison. Oh, they had, uh, they had pheasant. They had quail. Yeah. So, like, it's a little, it's a little cool store. They had quail, for sure. I don't know if they had alligator, but I'm pretty sure they can get it, Titan. There's lots of grouse that run around in Alberta, though. <laughs> hey, no dove! <laughs> <laughs> No white ones. <laughs> no white doves. Yeah, alligator can be tough. I think I'm just going to go wash my hands. Maybe I'll bring out our little white station now. Yep. Yeah. We'll keep this baby. Mm -hmm. People can add some to it. I'll also bring out also have barbecue sauce made for people. I think the only time I've had alligator was at culinary school and that was literally just to try it. Alligator's tasty. And it was pretty good. Yeah, same thing as we fried it, right? <laughs> One in doubt to deep fry. Okay, I'm gonna take my boning knife in guys. Gonna do a quick little wash up here where we were butchering the pig first thing. Randall's coffee is too good. Sammy will be around. Yeah. Did you just make it in here? Thank you very much, Scat. That's also an entry into the giveaway. Uh, 
I used to bow hunt with my dad, Farrell. Uh, definitely went hunting with rifles with my dad. Did a lot of duck hunting, lots of quail hunting. Uh, he does turkey hunting nowadays. We never went for moose. We always tried for a tag, but we never got it. Uh, caribou, I've never gone hunting for. We'll, we'll, willing to still go for that. The first prize is uh, Everything is Awesome, or Everyone is Awesome by, by Lego. No, we, we, we never went for the trophy. We always went for the necessity. My dad just liked hunting. We liked eating the meat. Nothing was ever wasted. Uh, the farmers that we hunted on their property, we gave them the heart, the liver, and a couple kilos worth every year for every single deer that we shot. And we learned how to make maple syrup with them. They liked them. They wanted them, so we gave them to them. That's what they requested. They love the heart, the liver, and the lungs, so we always brought them to them. Smoked deer heart is supposed to be unreal. I've never hunted for gator, but I have had gator before, and it's fantastic. See in a little bit, view. This will be a while. at 10.30 and then we'll do it every half hour after that. So 11, 11.30, 12, This is a pig roast. <laughs> what a mistake. <laughs> Astra, 
need to show you the Aspen apparently. <laughs> this dog. This is the dog of dogs. Sorry for disturbing you, Your Majesty. Sliding into the DMs. One sec, you discussing with Caitlin. White Dove, thank you for the five gifted subs. Welcome in Seattle Joe, USDCB21, Weed Passports, Drop It, Midnight Orchid. I know today isn't the most ethical of streams for some of you, but it was an ethically killed pig, and it's fantastic that we get to do it today. I am very, yes, we are definitely very thankful for the life that it has. That's what I'm going to do next. After I finish putting away dishes, I'm writing out all the new names. We had to even it back out any from the starting of the month of what we had already. So this is the true accurate sub count currently. Well, <clears throat> what we can say is it actually, if you think about it, Amy, it changes every day, the sub count, because some people drop off, other people add on, so yeah, it literally changes every day. I kind of keep it updated every couple of days, just so it doesn't change too much all the time. It's 11.30 or 10.30, so it's time to give it a rub down and check it out. 
unusual to change by over a hundred. Usually that happens if someone like Norges gifts a hundred and then they drop off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, sub bombs. <laughs> but it's good questions. Okay. So we're just rubbing it during the first 30 minutes the the pig expels a bunch of moisture from the skin and then if you don't rub that evenly you'll end up with like little streaks running down the outside of the pig which doesn't really look too nice You're still mad at them, Rose? <laughs> Let's just hope that they don't eat bacon. Let's just hope that. Yeah, zebra pig scaramouche. How are you doing in New York? Are you okay? I've seen some photos and that shit cray. slightly longer Sunday stream but it's a long weekend we haven't had any friends over we haven't seen anybody yet this summer really and we wanted to have a barbecue with some people and today is an absolutely gorgeous day so we might as well cook a pig Yeah, I know. I read the best way to look at a house, Annie, is to look at it when it's pouring rain. Because then you'll see if all the eaves and stuff work as well. Can't hide nothing when it's raining.
I'm loving this chat right now. The German houses. Massive house. Solid house. <laughs> more durable than six, but ten times more expensive. As I always say, German things are built to last. <laughs> That's why she chose me. I'm gonna, she's gonna die before I'm gonna die and I have to put up with that afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Watch, I'm gonna die first. Sunday fun day. You gotta have some fun some days.
Uh, no, Trigger makes a bunch of different types of pellets. Any, they have 100% pure oak, apple, and hickory, and then they do a competition blend, a supreme blend, um, a oak and hickory, and oak and apple, and oak and pecan. There's a bunch. Uh, there's a turkey mix that's just supposedly good for turkeys. And I got I got the 100% hickory for us today for this pig. So it should be a nice amber hue when it's done. Do you use this to mix? Yeah, I use it to mix the spices. You're supposed to use Traeger brand pellets. I use Lumberjack and I have no problem. I think it also <laughs> is a bit different when you buy the grill from your friend. <laughs> so that's what I use today. They're from, I think they're from Wisconsin. Yeah, that's what we use today. Strike nine, welcome in. Thank you for the 14 months in a row with your Prime Gaming sub. That's an intro into the raffle for ya. How are you doing, friendo? We got 13 minutes till we check the thing again. Yeah, we could do that, madame. I heckin' love bento boxes. Oh no! No, Strike! No! Are you okay? I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, we've been battling just like a stupid head cold all week, but I am so sorry to hear that the GF has it. Hopefully you don't have it. You're just around her. And Han, is it Hanshul? Hanshul? Probably. Hanshul, thank you very much for the four months being part of the kitchen crew. That's an entry for you. Okay, I'm done on my wiping. I'm gonna start writing out some names while I finish my coffee. We had 70 entries into the raffle on the first day. You wanna sit in front? No, it's okay. I was just going to do it here. Get the stick. Get it.
There's our first 70. Be adding a bunch more to that right away here. Good morning, Suki. And thank you as well. Paying it forward. Hanchel gifted a sub to Mr. Poritz. Welcome to the crew, Mr. Poritz. I know you're not new here, but now you got an official sub badge. And good morning, Suki. How are you doing? better today. Oh, that's what I wanted to quickly do. I was just going to go take a little bit of sinus stuff. Oh, snap. Kicking off a hype train, friendos. Welcome in, Baker Dave. Thank you for the raid. How was your stream today, Dave? What did you get up to? And thank you for sharing your community with us. Thank you as well, Sammy. Gifting this up to my name is Kua. I Sparks, hello. We will be peeking at the pig in about 15 minutes or so. If you're wondering what the heck's going on here. Oh, yum. Green olive sticks. Little green olive breads. That sounds delicious. I heckin' love olives, so I would be so into that. Do you have a photo of how it turned out? And good morning, Dust. But Annie saw mom wrap some cheese sticks in turkey slices for a bento box. You're like little hams wrapped around the cheese. Basically like Lunchables, you're thinking? Hey, thank you, Hanshul. Gifting a sub to a fellow streamer who just raided us. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Baker Dan, or Baker Dave, sorry. I don't know if you use Discord at all, Dave, but if you want, you can pop a photo in our food photo section in our Discord. We like to spread the deliciousness here. And Timber, I'll be starting in about an hour from now. I typically start at 11 a.m. Pacific. We got an hour till that time. I think we'll be good. Hey, nice strike. Yeah, you got your passport renewed? I would love a visit when the world's not burning slash flooding. <laughs> I think we need, oh yeah, my Discord was on there. Perfect. Okay, I will be right back, friends. Hang tight.
I just realized the audio <clears throat> sounds a bit weird. I'm gonna do this. Get a little music in our life. almost maxing out your entries for the raffle already. First day you found us. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs to the community. Okay, welcome into I Sparks. Oh, whoops. Abra Cadaver, I Shot Bow, XYZ Twitch, T-Frog, Jota, we got True Purple with us, Carla M. Lux, and Alistair Fiend. A bunch of people with like long-term subs even. Thank you for that.
amazing, eh, cooking girl? Lauren, you made it in for the perfect timing. It's Let's time to rub it. down the pig. Oh! It's kind of creepy how the eye opened up. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Shush, madame. Of course the eyeball's in there. <laughs> Where else would it be? <laughs> starts to brown evenly rather than in splotches from the fat or moisture coming out of the skin and then later on we will put some fat on the skin to make it nice and brown and seal. Cookie was on fire? Oh no. I was gonna say Cookie's not here yet. <laughs> he sleeps in it. Cookie's the best. I can never blame Cookie for anything. Okay, I'll just put this over so you can read still. Right. So I got up to there. Mr. Design yesterday just crushing us.
Yeah, very dark in color, exactly. Oh, you heated them up in the air fryer, nice. <laughs> Scott, are you landscaping today? Oh my gosh, what kind of landscaping are you doing? Oh, no. Is that a morning flood? Oh, 
shit, strike nut, I remember those. I asked my dad for a light sky burner. He was like, you can't afford that, Sam. I was like, okay, dad. <laughs> Alright, music collection best since you're like 14 15 oh do you still use the cds though that's what i want to know that's so cool annie 100 cds of your band recordings in the original wrapper i will take one yeah if one gets shipped to this address i will accept it bad thing is, actually no, we can play it in the car. We have a CD player in the car still. Really? Yeah, there's one in there. Your CD will be the only CD that will ever be played in that car. I hear cheese, I come a running. Three, <laughs> three cheese burrito. You're good. Got your yard work, work done before the cookout. How's the pig? It's going good, my dude. 11.30, we will check it again. So 15-ish minutes. We'll check on it one more time. I am currently writing out raffle entries as we sit here together and spend some time. Currently doing one more for you. Just cook out all of the moisture and it'll be very dry. So 
yes, it'll be done quicker, but the end result will be nowhere near as delicious. Six entries coming up for Dust Pirate. for the appraisal? Lauren. I got no words. <laughs> I'm gonna just have a sip of coffee. <laughs> that was really good though. Food hit the spot. Bean is ready to go. It sounded like a nummy dinner. It only took you like half an hour. The temp staying really consistent. Yeah. <coughs> it's bouncing between 278 and 273. We're not even mad, we're impressed. <laughs> oh, what, Eric? Yeah, the Scotch Bonnet Cheddar? They put sugar in it? Oh my gosh. Was that made for French people? They had to dull down the spice? Who adds sugar into cheese? I'm upset. That is so weird, dude. I'm sad for you. I'm more disappointed in that than Lauren's pun. <laughs> Snap! <laughs> yeah, that was rough. <laughs> She's not even here to defend herself. Oh, she is. <laughs> that was actually such a good pun. I loved it. That's why I had no words. Like, I actually laughed. I didn't expect it. Comes in, settles in the blanket for, and gives us that. <laughs> yes, pause. He already knew what was gonna happen. Pause for 19 months in a row. I'll let you know that that's also an entry into the raffle. Oh, yeah. And what, Taz? At the Minnesota State Fair, there was a big green egg stand. Did you get photos? Did you... What? Todd did you gets take... stay for 12 minutes. Did you pretend like you were Sam and start grilling or what? They had the Giga one? Oh, what? Like seven feet wide? Oh my god. <coughs> you need like 10 bags of charcoal to start that bitch. You could grill a Taz. <laughs> yes! I'm so happy that Devin was reminded of us. The crazy Canuckians. Okay, like a two second sneak peek, ready? Okay, and then next question. Very what flash. they were cooking on it, did it look good? Okay, have a sneak peek. <laughs> good one. <laughs> What's the giveaway? We got like a bunch of different prizes. You can win the Lego Everyone is Awesome set. We have a Star Wars cookbook going with a bar cocktail set. We have some Twitch stuff to give away. Probably not good for you, but we have some St. Jude stuff as well. Yeah, it's the whole thing, Eric. You weren't ready. <laughs> You ate like 1,800 of bar mix snacks and you hate yourself now? Or 1,800 calories? I mean, as long as you don't do that every day, you're fine. That's so cool, madame. You have a Texas visitor this week. Okay, I'm gonna keep writing out the raffles, going 
them into cooking girls entries. It's so good to have cooking girl back. We missed her. The McDonald's meal is like 1,500 calories. <clears throat> 1,800 is right. not that bad. Right, right.
Thank right, you thanks. very much. Only two followers? Really? It might not be the right one. Maybe they stopped streaming altogether and someone took the username. <laughs> yeah, of course Suki's a mod for the channel. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go. That's the one. Thank you for the clarification. Disregard last shout out. Regard this shout out. Okay, good luck, Taz. I hope your butt turns out great. You go smoke your butt. Go get that butt smoked. Go <laughs> smoke your butt for Devin. <laughs> <laughs> Give it one or two slaps for me first. Yeah. Before you smoke the butt, make sure you slap it. You always have to slap the butt. If you do not slap the butt, it's not a proper pork shoulder. Now, one liter of entries. It's time to 
look at pork. We give it another rub down. Starting to get some nice color to it. Close that back up. And let it keep on going. It's just pork rub, so um, meat churches, these nuts, pecan rub, and our pork rub 50-50. All the internal things are gone. Caitlin cleaned out the glands. There were no kidneys left inside. We took out the silver skin that wasn't needed on the shoulders and the ribs were already cleaned perfectly for us. That pig is gonna be fantastic. Uh, there was none, strike none. It was all gone. Yeah, the head is completely intact still. Cheeks and jowls are, are the best part, for sure. Uh, we need a bigger pig's head to make head cheese now. Hey, oh, strike then. Normally the jowl is taken out and cured. I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. I can't. For some reason I can't think of it. Well, I know why I can't think of it. <laughs> What's the jowl cured again? Guanchale. Guanchale. That's normally what the pork uh, jowl is done. Welcome in, Captain's Eye Patch. Thank you, Scaramouche, for the gifted sub to Haleyizer. Eliza. Eliza. Welcome to the kitchen crew. 
Hope you're doing well. Welcome and thank you for the follow, Captain's Eye Patch. This is my current schnacka. A delicious plum. And welcome back, old style. Thank you for the 10 months together. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. What should go in the liquid you spray on the meat? Usually, Taz, we do a mixture of half and half, apple cider vinegar, apple juice. But really, that's up to you. Aw, thank you, Scaramouche. I appreciate that. And Haley, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can dull it down with a little bit of water if you want, or you can go with like a pineapple juice or something else like that. But if you don't have anything sweet, yeah, just maybe dull down the vinegar a bit. You're the legend. Yes, yes, spray bottle is key for sure. Get that nice even spritz. Look at this first bite. Skin is so sour compared to the flesh. Welcome in, Nth Encounter. Happy Sunday. The beginning of the weight of the pig was 39 pounds. We took maybe 200 grams worth of trim off. Mm -hmm. When's the next time we check it again? We started at 11 o'clock. Okay. Okay. So 20 minutes? Yeah. We'll have another peak in 20 minutes or so. And then once it starts to get golden, then we switch to fat on the skin.
Are you smoking chickens and a duck today? Wicked. And thank you very much for the sub. Nine months in a row. Caitlin's having way too many Twitch babies with y'all. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm guessing I have to be okay with it. But thank you for staying for nine months. I'll have to make another one. So I'll be. Uh, Kate's doing good. She has a little bit of a cough still, slight runny nose. But all in all, we're, we're feeling really good. Definitely not sick anymore, just. I'm, I'm very excited as well to do this. Uh, we've been talking on stream about it for probably a good year and a half. I wanted to do one on the island, but they always were too big. So 
I, I'm really excited to do this. This has been a long time coming for a lot of people on the street. I think it was Annie and Scat that brought it up first. I think Caitlin still wants to do like a half a cow, quarter cow. So I want to go talk to one of the butchers here in the city and see if we can just go down there and do it with them and scream from inside the shop. The bad part is the COVID numbers are starting to go back up already, so I'm not sure how willing somebody is to let me into their clean space with my camera and such. So. Uh, we're gonna see how that plays out. I hope I hope we can do it. But we're gonna go check out his shop next week, I think. Yeah, the one I did at Big Rock. The one in the, the big black uh, smokers there. Yeah. Like those were three, 300 pounds. Kayla and I lifted those onto the, onto the grill. That was right after she was done her bodybuilding. So she was like super jacked and strong. And I was already lifting like almost 300. Comes at 278. It'll fluctuate, it's fine. Yeah, at the time in Vancouver, I was almost bench pressing 300 pounds and squatting that as well. Anyways, back to what I was doing. He yeah, has distracted me. Yeah, you, got, you guys distracted me, and now I'm starting to make that tire.
why can't you click on wrist? It might be... Oh, they might have switched to a different tier for the emotes when we added new ones. Okay, Josie. We have 12.8k more to go until the pizza. Nice, Annie. The butter, <laughs> Josie. The burger, the ribs, pizza. Hey, hey, Cookie. How are you? Welcome, welcome. We heard that you were tearing it up yesterday in AFK Kitchen. We were like, that doesn't surprise us. That's our cookie. Expect nothing else. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Captain's eye patch, real cooking is never having to say you're sorry. That's true as well. Yeah. That works that way too. The briquettes went up in the sunshine. Are you having a crazy time over there, Taz? Is everything okay? <laughs>
You're three having fun? Three minutes. Perfect. Yeah, three minutes till we check this and then we're starting, friendos. Switch the audio as well. Just my body pack. Taz, concerned you don't have enough wood chips? I hope that you soaked them. I will say that they'll last longer if you soaked them. Okay, just gonna mute the iPhone, switch to the proper mic. Check, check, check. We're back. Chiggity check. Cooking girl was adamant about that. Good. She's guiding you the proper way then. Soaking it in scotch. Yeah, that would be a bit expensive. I would just save the scotch for drinking, really. I'm pretty sure that would go up in fire. <laughs> okay. So? What are we doing at this stage? Just wiping, possibly? Yep. Possible wipe, making sure everything is looking like it's cooking even. Oh yeah, look at that, it's getting some color now. Starting to dry out a bit. Yeah, I don't really feel any more moisture. That's really nice. That's it. We don't spritz it or anything like that. Wash my hands. Spank it. It might be a bit late for spanking. Should have spanked it when I was butchering it earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's a banimal sentence in a gaming stream. <laughs> Okay, Sammy's restarted the timer. And we can switch up the scene. This feels crazy. Oh my gosh, hello. Hello, friends. Hi, I'm Kate. We're here. That's Sam. And we are doing a pig roast today with a bunch of different sides going with it. Cooking for our friends. It's going to be a bit of a gathering of sorts. Yeah, hello there. Hi. Hi, Dust. How are you doing? It's going to be fun. So have we really linked recipes for all the veggies? What's going to go down? So obviously Piggy is taking up our oven, AKA Traeger right now. So we can't roast any veg in there, anything like that. So we're going to do everything else kind of like what Taz is doing right over the charcoal. So we will light up the extra large big green egg. We have purple potatoes going down from the farmer's market corn what else oh we do have beets i don't know if i'll cook the beets i guess we'll see 
Okay, potatoes, corn, we got peppers, cauliflower, green beans to go in there, and maybe some other things too. I guess we'll just clear out the fridge and see how we feel about everything. So the potatoes will be done in foil. I did link a recipe for that if you've never done it before. One of my favorite ways to make potatoes, especially in the summertime. It's really, really easy and delish. So we will get the potatoes prepped that way. And then kind of the rest of the veg will just be grilled fresh over the coals. Shouldn't take too long. I think corn to get it fully cooked all the way through. That's probably one of the longer cook times. Same with the potatoes. It's like corn directly over charcoal. You want to give it about 15 minutes or so. Get some nice color on there. I would say the green beans and the cauliflower probably take the least amount of time, somewhere around 10 minutes if we have a really nice hot fire. Yeah, maybe we'll just wrap the beets. They're really nice and small. Just throw them on the grill that way because I don't think they'll take very long to cook. Or we could also save the beets till next week. So that's something that stays good in the fridge is your root vegetables. I mean, we'll see how many vegetables we end up prepping because we do know that we have to feed 12 people today. So we don't want to run out of food. Would way rather have extra, right? Than not enough in the end. Okay, so I'll put a couple things on the list and then we have a timer set to check the pig again. And we'll kind of go back and forth between everything that's going on today. Nice thing about like once the pig is on and roasting, you don't have to watch it too, too closely. Just peek on it every now and then, but nothing crazy is gonna happen. Hi Timber, yeah, welcome. We're cooking now. Okay, so I'll put potatoes, corn, cauliflower, green beans, And maybe beets, we'll put a question mark. Leave the beets till the end. If it's too much, then we won't make them. Okay, I'll bring a bunch of that stuff out and then we'll get into it. We got our foil beside us. And yeah, like I said, green beans, cauliflower right over charcoal. So we'll just prep them, put them on a sheet pan and get it ready for the grill. Hang tight. Oh yeah, and remember, dessert is already made. We did it yesterday on stream, the raspberry lemon bars. So we'll have to cut those up as well today and get them prepped. So I'll pop that on there. Yeah, good questions, Chase. So kind of like how we always cook meats, especially big pieces of meat, right? Is you always want to have a thermometer handy and available to use so that you can keep checking the internal temperature. That's really what is the most important. You can go by feel, but the best way to go is internal temperature for the suckling pig. We don't have to cook it as far as like a typical regular size pork shoulder. The meat is much more tender and like supple, right? So you only go to 190 Fahrenheit. Otherwise, after that, it kind of starts to dry out a bit. Okay, lemon bars on there. Don't forget that. All right, come on in. How is this? Are we happy with this? I feel like we're cutting out a bit of this. So I'm just gonna move this a touch. Ugh. There 
There we go. Okay, so check out these potatoes. They almost look black, right? <laughs> it's like, what? How is that a potato? So cool. Hi, Green Fang. Hello, Alex. Alex says, woof. So all of the veg that we're using today has come from a local Heatherite farm. Hi, Finn. Yeah, Finn picked up these potatoes for us. We're eating the rainbow today. I can't even get into here. Trying not to mess up the bag. It's going really good so far. Piggy is on the grill roasting. All the hard stuff for that is done. And now we just have to do the easy part of prepping all the sides. Because of the size of these potatoes, I would think that they are quite fresh, right? Freshly grown. And the skin looks really nice and thin as well. So I don't even think I'm gonna really peel it up. We'll probably just maybe quarter them so it cooks a bit quicker. But it's nice that they're all mostly the same size. <laughs> Look at this one. No butts allowed on Twitch. Only tater butts. Yeah, boiling them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Nope, no boiling today. We're gonna do foil packed potatoes and then the rest of the veg is gonna be grilled over the coals. Just gonna lay them all out. Be easier for us to work that way. Yeah, hey Mega League, welcome in. I think I'm most excited about the corn. I love fresh corn in the summer, especially grilled. It's just so good. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is just pick a few of the papery stem pieces off, like that one. Just pick that off. We don't need that where we're going. And then I think that's good. How is this view as well? I feel like I'm way out of this. There we go. There we goes. <laughs> Eric's got all of the booty emotes. I think Lauren is having a little nappy right now, Migaleg. But she should be back later. I'm sure you'll be able to thank her in person. Yeah, everyone's being so generous already this month. It's crazy. Okay, so why don't we plan on kind of prepping everything on sheet pens so it's really easy to stack it all up back into the fridge as we work through it. So get a couple sheet pans up and out. And then for the potatoes, I think I'll just line, like tear a nice big piece of foil enough so that we can, I'll probably split these into two packages as well. So that we can pack all the potatoes nice and flat and then obviously fold over the one side to make a little package. <laughs> Taz, some things I learned about my tiny grill, it gets hot. And that is a hard thing is like once, if you get the coals too hot, it takes so long to cool it back down, Taz. So that's why it's like, usually one of the longer processes if you're cooking with coal is just slowly heating it up to equalize that temp so you don't have to mess with it later. Okay, first things first, prep our foil. It gets hot, it gets hot. Hoot grill. Something like that to start. Because we got to fold the three sides. 
And we need two pieces like that. You'll just crank the second vent above the coals open. Aye, nice, yeah. I'm just gonna go quickly check in the fridge. I think I have a little bit of garlic chicken fat or some garlic oil left. I'm gonna let that temp up and then we'll dress the potatoes with the garlicky fats. Nom. This goodness. <laughs> yeah, talk fat to me all of that. So we'll let that warm up as we deal with the potatoes. Okay, let's uh, get our chef's knife over. We'll do a little run on the steel before we get into it. And then maybe one other thing that could be smart is I feel like these potatoes are gonna want to color the wooden cutting board underneath when we cut them open. So maybe we'll put a plastic board there. We'll see though, we'll see. We might get away with it. Oh no, I'm so sad to hear that Mega Lake. You just burnt a pan of rice. Sag. All right, so like I said, we'll just quarter these. So we'll go boom and look at the inside. Isn't this the coolest thing ever? Purple taters. And then usually I just hold it together and then go in a quarter. So cool. It hurts more, yeah, because you're Asian. <laughs> what? I don't even know the name. I got nothing. Coolest taters ever. Yeah, colorful. I bet they're packed with antioxidants. I love the different like colors though. Shetland black potato. Is that actually it? Let's see this. It totally is. A dark purple heritage variety of potato was developed in the Victorian era. Like the 1800s. So cool. You have Galen blue potatoes in Switzerland, but you've never seen purple and white. No, I've never even seen this. Like every single one is just art. It's distracting. Coolest thing ever. And both Finn and I, our favorite color is purple. So this is very fitting. Or it's a Russian blue. Look at this one's like all purple. What's happening? What we got? There's nothing even there. I've never heard her bark like that before. Doggo says, stay away from our piggy. I don't even know Green Fang. I know she's been playing with the squirrel kind of all morning. What was there? <laughs> she's covered in sawdust. 
And yeah, we're okay today, Cookie. I actually turned on like the legit bug zapper in front of me. A couple sizzles so far, but yeah, not bad at all. Okay, check this out. That's like about half of them already. Good girl. <laughs> we'll do what? One more? Does that look like about half? Maybe one more still. Yeah, kind of, hey? Opening geodes. The fancy rocks. Just slide in the other piece of foil out from underneath there because we're going to dress them all at the same time. So I'll just pop that to the side. You're growing the solid purple ones. So crazy. They're so cool cooking, girl. So cool. And food yesterday. Heck, what did we have? Oh, this salad. Salad was really good. Crushed all of that right after stream. And yeah, the Oreo fluff salad is insanely delicious. And then the one other thing we made yesterday, the lemon raspberry bars, we'll be tasting those today together. Just we had to bake them yesterday because there's no way that they could bake with the pig in the Traeger. Yeah, purple is my favorite color as well. Purple beans, purple potatoes. We got the purple cauliflower today. You can see how it's slightly coloring the board though where I'm cutting, right? The natural dye. Did we end up getting the peaches? We didn't. So this is what happened, Timber, is the same day that my bro and his partner, Finn, went and got all the veggies from the market, they also picked up fruits from one of the vendor. We didn't know that they were doing it. So yeah, could not go to H&W to get the peaches this week. But thank you very much anyways for looking for them for us. Back in the 90s, the blue potatoes you grew turned gray after cooking. They looked gross and even tasted bland. Oof. That's interesting. The other thing I'm going to say is it's also going to slowly color your skin. The dye. They've really improved. Well, that's good. I think we'll have the perfect amount of food for everyone today as well. And we even told everyone to bring containers in case there's leftovers. This one's a bit large, so I'll cut it a couple times through. Just so we don't have any crunchy taters later on. And then the one other thing I'll say is for foil packed potatoes, you really don't want to skimp on the fat. Otherwise they kind of turn out dry and start sticking on. Scat, thank you so much for the 500 bits. That's an entry into the raffle for you. Thank you for supporting our food truck fund. I know that's what we thought they were at first view. We were like, what? You guys found mango steens at the farmer's market here? But then they're like, no, it's potatoes, silly. We're like, oh, <laughs> that makes more sense. Mango steens, what can we say? Are like a southern hemisphere, tropical sort of fruit. I had them when I was traveling in Asia. I know they grow in South America as well. Okay. 
So take my knife out of here. We'll bring the potatoes back in. Yeah, they're quite delish. Open this up. One pan. Two pans. This looks like an even amount. Transfer a few more over. Good enough. Where's our fats? Yum. A little bit of garlic oil to start. We'll split that between the two packs. Even it out with olive oil to go the rest of the way. I'm going to go grab the oil really quick. Crazy, that's a cool fact cookie. We hate fruit flies. Then we'll toss this all up just with our hands to make sure it's all evenly coated. Sprinkle with some salt and pepper. We got garlic flavor on here already, so I think we'll be good to go with that. And then maybe we can dress some of the other veggies a bit different. No, I've never had that scat, luckily. Fruit flies that get into the fridge. I can just imagine though. That'd be terrifying. Yeah, really good amount of oil I added. Should be no risk of stickage or drying out at all here. Smells so good and garlicky already. Awesome. Do a quick rinse a roo in the soapy water. Yeah, welcome in XYZ. Had lots of generous viewers already this morning or afternoon. Welcome back to the kitchen crew. Okay, grab our salt and pep. I wonder if there's a langoustine dish with mangosteen. You could probably make it work. Okay, so even sprinkling of salt. You can always add more later, but we can't take it away. So don't go too crazy with it. But I will say that potatoes take a surprising amount of salt for them to taste seasoned all the way through. There we go. And then we'll just do fresh cracked pepper. This could also be the time where you add some fresh herbs in or even dried herbs. Like I was maybe kind of thinking of sprinkling a bit of the poultry spice blend of herbs would be good. Thyme, savory. Sage, maybe a bit of rosemary. 
Yeah, mango seeds are a fruit. Okay, honestly, I think that's gonna be good. So now, okay, sounds good, Megalig. Gonna address your burnt pan situation. I hope it goes well for you. Nice and easy. I've seen people get chopped from chopped for under seasoning, but almost never for over seasoning. It'll say it's like, yes, you can over season something, but for the most part, most people under season their food for sure. It's a really hard thing to teach. It's like the amount of salt everything it takes for it to be proper seasoned. You know what I might do? I might just tear two more pieces of foil, spread this out a bit more. But we can't take up too much space though in the grill either. So I want these two packs to kind of fit on the top rack on the egg. Let's see how this will be if I fold it. I'm gonna turn it this way so it fits better. Uh, it won't be too bad. I think that'll be all right. So kind of fold it in half to start. And then I think the first thing I'll do is actually, maybe we'll do one, one fold or a couple folds here. If we can do like a half one, that would be really awesome. Like that. And then we can fold the edges in. I didn't hear that joke before, Dust. Did you hear about the award-winning Scarecrow? He was outstanding in his field. Yeah, pretty sure every single joke is pretty much old. I mean, the way that we run the stream here is like... The worse the joke is, the better, really. <laughs> Tuck in this end as well. got our first or first package look at our first potato foil packet so now let's work on the other one and then all i'm gonna do this should be easy to move around now look we'll have a perfect pan of foil packed potatoes and then all we gotta do pop that onto the grill hello bonk how are you doing happy sunday friend Real quick, who out of our American friends, does everyone off work tomorrow? Did you luck out with a bit of a holiday? Long weekend? Just gonna turn this again for myself. That worked really good last time. Oh my gosh, I guess we get some pollen today. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, this one's a bit uneven how we tore it. So I'm gonna do it the other way instead. Tomorrow off, Bonk, and Tuesday. Yeah! Eric, off tomorrow, cooking out and drinking tonight. Love it. You're visiting your dad, hippie. Nice. Sounds good, guys. Okay, that's better. Sometimes we got to make judgment calls, right? Do what works best for us. Okay, so get a couple folds first and then we'll do the edges again. And 
and I find if you fold it nicely to start, it's really easy to check on the potatoes later to see how they're cooking. You can just undo the clean folds and no risk of tearing the foil at all. There we go. Now we'll work on this edge. I'll also say doing this, doing potatoes this way, it's pretty forgiving. Whether you do it over like a gas grill or directly over coals. It kind of roasts and steams at the same time, right? Because we added the oil in there, so that'll help kind of brown and crisp stuff up. And then because we sealed it, is all the steam's gonna stay inside. Piggy timer? Okay. I'll check it right after I'm done this potato package, Sam. Good timing, Bonk. Good timing. Cool. And we didn't make any holes. Whoa. Do we need to get them? You should go get those things. Are they causing a ruckus? Transfer that onto there. Oh, I like how we did the foil two different ways. I guess we're, uh, we're doing an experiment. Which foil packet will cook the best? Shiny side or the other way? Okay, I'm gonna bring these to the fridge. Or actually, don't really have to put them in the fridge, the potatoes, if we're gonna be cooking them later today. Totally okay to sit out unless it's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside. You just pop those to the side. Okay, let's check on the piggy. Let's take a look. Okay then. Looking really happy still. Nothing really going on here. It's nice and dry. Nothing to wipe off. It's looking real even. Slowly building up the color over time. Piggy got a sunburn. I know, right? It's so amazing how it fit there. Okay, so. Spritz. Refresh. Check the pig in 30 minutes. Okay, back to here. First things first, potatoes on the list. That's a check. Prepped, ready to go. We're gonna have a sip of water real quick. I mean, he is missing one ear, Mish. Kind of have questions about that. Okay, our core next. So full corn on the cob. I like when the corn kernels get like a bit of charring on them and popping right over the coals and then other people actually cook the corn in the husk still. I think I'm gonna shuck them all just for like ease of serving later on, let's say. So I guess that's where we'll start. And this is probably gonna get messy too, so I'll just pop this here. Fun with shucking corn. Who did this a lot when you were young? This is Tabor corn. Pigs get their tails amputated in Danida. Uh, this one didn't, but I think, I think that could be a thing, Mish. Yeah, the others will nom it. This looks so good. Look at this, peaches and cream. 
Thank you for the follow, Silverbeard. Double zero two. I have not had this in so long, Cookie. So excited. It looks great. It really does. So then we just take the bottom and we can go boom, snap it off. She is a beaut. I cannot wait to eat this later. And Snake Eye DIY. <laughs> this channel is pretty corny today, Kate. Thank you for the 14 month resub, Snake. I hope you've been well. Also let you know that that's an entry into our September raffle for you. So let's just make a mess on this first. I'm just transferring the shucked corn onto this pan over here. And then we'll probably cut them in half. To prep them as well. Peaches and cream is the best, Maya. It is one of the best, it's true. I love the squeaks. Yeah, it's raffle time. And then I'll also let you guys know we are already planning the next raffle. It's going to be a Christmas time one in December. May or may not have already planned to give away an apron. Boom. Yeah already in the works bonk very excited for that exactly like this one sam sweet this is just some perfect looking corn here guys i have another bag that we can get into if i feel like this is not enough <laughs> giving away a holiday goose oh an apron <laughs> I think the corn hairs are like the worst thing to deal with. And holy, welcome and thanks for the follow. Bite my shiny metal ass. Is this a robot? Why is your butt metal? <laughs> I just even hate the feeling of the corn hairs bonk. It's just such a weird feeling. So sticky and stringy. <sighs> Futurama reference? Oh, good one, Scott. Maybe, hey? Bender? Yeah, good one. Okay, you'll be okay here. You'll be okay. We'll take good care of you. Four corns, two more to go, and then maybe two more. What is that? Two, four, six. We'll do eight, and then we have if we split them all, then we have 16 pieces. the worst when you see that there was something 
had a little nibble. A little nibble in there. Someone snuck a little taste. Probably like a field mouse or something like that, I would say. Or I know that birds like to eat corn as it matures too, because it's sweet. Yeah, something took uh, their family out for a nice corn dinner, <laughs> Maya. Barracuda, your dog's name is Nibbler. Nibbler. So these, I mean, we'll probably just oil up simply with salt and pepper, and then maybe we'll make a nice little butter to go with it. I have lots of fresh basil. I know that like a basil kind of lemon butter is really nice with corn. So I'm gonna stuff all of the husks back into the bag there. So you can take it to the compost bin. A little Yorkie Terrier. Yeah, we named our basil plant Jeffrey Basils. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey Basils. That's a good one too, Bonk. I'm gonna try to not use too much foil today because we already did the potatoes. Yeah, wrap them in foil, herbed butter, salt and pepper, cook it on the top shelf. It's the best. Okay, BRB. Two more corns. Oh yeah, maybe we'll put that on the menu coming up this week, Scat. Because I've never made that on stream yet, the elote. And we still have four more cobs in the fridge to use up next week. Whoa, this one's really making a mess here. That was a lot of corn hairs. Hello, Mr. Porritz. How are you? There's no such thing as the elote man here. It doesn't exist in Canada. Maybe in the States. But yeah, that would be the easiest way, wouldn't it? Go find someone who's already making it. <laughs> Pick that weird stuff off. Or yeah, I guess you could make it loose without the actual cob corn. Just get the niblets. Not quite the same though, right? Maybe easier to eat though. Bam. Okay. 
That's good. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break coming up here before we finish this sneaky coffee pee. So I'm going to mute it real quick and I'll be right back. Hold tight, friendos. Okay, I'm back, guys. Come on. You're good. Doggo doesn't know what to do with herself. Yes, yeah, Scat. I hate corn silk so much. Easily top 10 most annoying thing in cooking. I don't know if I did that, Maya. In Girl Scouts, you made corn dolls with the dried cobs. Corn silk was the hair, dried apple was the head. They are so cute. I cannot recall that, but I did take Girl Scouts as well. Yeah, very bushcraft as well. You were 10. So good. Okay. So next up for these, like I said, I think I'll just cut them in half so they're ready to go i don't want to be fooling around with cutting them later we'll just pop them back on the tray and then i think that'll go in the fridge but then we did talk about making a butter for them later on so before we switch into another veg let's finish off all of this stuff we need prep for the corn we don't want to skip ahead at all <laughs> you called the corn doll maria so cute that's a good one too, Annie. The dirt and leaks. Ugh. And like, if you just miss the smallest amount, the worst feeling ever. Punisher, a whole pig? Uh, what do we have on the timer left? We'll check in 13 minutes. 13 minutes we're checking it, Punisher, so hang tight. Okay. I think this will work. Yeah, there we go. Pop right through. 
Good to go. Just be careful. Sandy clams or shellfish. That's a good one too, scat. Cannot stand that. I mean, especially when we were working in a restaurant and you'd have that happen to a poor customer, no matter how many times you rinse, sometimes there's still sand regardless. It's like, it's also a thing that you kind of have to go into knowing that it might be sandy. Cause I've had that a few times from restaurants and it's like, well, they can't really help it. So what's the point of complaining? just gonna make the chef feel like crap that's about it unless it's like a full clam that was sandy that's fair enough that should be picked through isn't it so good Taz like look how juicy this is too should come in a bit closer maybe Looking so heckin' good. This one's really hard, holy. Corn for the people. We can oil these a little bit later, I think will be a smart move. Gonna wash the knife, give everything a little rinse a roux from the starches. We'll bring the corn in. I don't have a ton of butter to use, I will be honest here. But I mean, a little bit goes a long way, right? So I have to get that softened up. Hi, BB Bubs, how are you? Happy Sunday, friend. Yeah, this is my first corn of the season and I am so excited to grill this up today. Thanks for the shout out for BB Bubs as well, friendo. So anyone who is not following BB Bubs on Twitch, go give him a follow so you can check him out when he's live. Also a professional chef, teaches you along the way, makes all sorts of deliciousness over on his channel. And ice melted pea, thanks for the follow. Okay, I will be right back. Hi Chuck, we got Sam's dad in here with us. Had this t for lunch today too. Tis the season, right? Yeah, exactly, Taz, BB Bubs, one of my grilling advisors. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, 420 and libations friendly as well. Okay. Bringing this in, I will be back with butter. Maybe a lemon for lemon zest to go into there. A lemon basil butter for the corn. Okay. Okay, wait, I have a question though. Has anyone ever made like a butter with avocado in it? Like an avocado butter? Cause it's like, okay, I don't have a ton of butter, but I have some avos. Hmm. Yes, BB Bubs. Okay, phew. He's our avocado butter advisor as well. Could be awesome. Was it really good or weird? <laughs> yeah. Most store-bought American guac is just avocado fake flavored butter. Would the avo burn? Well, the thing is, we'll, we would spread it on after it's grilled. We'll just do a small oil to get it prepped for the grill in a season and then we'll finish after with some butter. Like a compound, let's say. We'll do butter, avocado, basil, and lemon zest. Or will it make it a weird color? Go for it, guys. Yeah, today's the day to like have fun. Maybe prepare the vegetables a bit different. <laughs> it won't burn if you spread the deliciousness. Pro tip from Annie. All right, BRB then.
Okay, we'll just have to soften the butter up a touch before we can deal with that. Make the corn, make the avo butter, try it on one half of the ear as a tester. You can make a puree of avo, lime, and cilantro and fold it into the butter or whip it together. <laughs> Saddest thing ever, Taz. I really don't have a lot of butter. No. That's why I was like, okay, we can either go tone it down with some oil, or then I looked at the avocados beside me here. Because this one feels really nice right now. Taz is like, I'll take this whole piece on my one ear of corn. Thank you. Do I still have ghee? I don't. I don't have any clarified butter around. Oh, I have one more small container with a little nubby of butter. I'll go grab that. And then, like I said, we're gonna soften it up. So this is what I'll do. I'll just put this in now so I can whip by Chef Mike real quick. I don't know about everyone else, but I always have two blocks of nice real butter. That's what we did have, and then we've already used it all up this week. A tub of garbage butter. I don't usually have garbage butter. And yeah, we've been kind of testing a couple of the different brands around here. You guys have sticks of challenge brand butter. Nice one. Trademark it, Bonk. Okay, BRB. No melting, just softening. For that amount, maybe 20 seconds. Guys, every time I leave outside, the dog always goes back in to check on me. It's so cute. Yeah, making stock, Sammy. So good. Okay. Mix this back up. So it gets like re happy. It almost went too far. That's okay. So you mix it to this point. We'll just let it firm back up for a few moments while I got to go grab the basil plant anyways that we're going to pick off of. Maybe if Sammy's listening, he can bring the basil out. Then I don't got to go anywhere. Okay, we'll leave that there. We're going to zest this up a bit. And we got one avo to mix in. Yeah, never. I would never do that for you, Kate. <laughs> Carolina Reaper butter. Wait, Taz, I have to ask. How was your ghost pepper pasta last night? How was it? I mean, you're alive today, so it couldn't have been that bad. Get the microplane. Madame, what is garbage butter? <laughs> it's 
It's a low grade butter, low quality. Let's not do like more than a teaspoon of lemon zest, just so it doesn't overpower this. And I'm thinking that we won't really have to worry about the avo turning brown because the butter is going to make a barrier. Check out my basil plant. That honestly, I had to bring inside because it got nuked the other day. I was like, oh, I'll just put it outside. Way too much sun. Got roasted. Lunar owns Twitch. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, this we picked up 10 bucks from Costco. I hope it survives for a good bit. It looks pretty spindly though. You might have to make pizza soon again. Yeah? How come? Because the basil? <laughs> make margaritas. Okay, mix our butter in, or our lemon <laughs> into the butter. And then. One minute till we check? Yeah. Sammy's so getting ready. Pick the biggest leaves first. And I mean, a little bit of basil goes a long way. So that'll probably be more than enough already. Will there be feta today? Mmm. Maybe, Mish. Maybe. I'm. This is what I'm thinking. It was like this avocado butter thing. Sprinkle a bit of feta over the corn after that. It's like almost a low taste style. Because feta and corn is really yummy. I don't know if it would go with really any of the other stuff that we're making today. Feta with potato. Uh, feta and green bean. Kind of like eh. Uh, same with the cauliflower. Okay, so I just made our little basil blunt. <clears throat> and then we're going to chop through nice and fine. This is called a chiffonade. Yeah, fun take on a lote, right? So we'll slice through our basil blunt and then chop it a bit more fine. And then this should stay pretty nice and green as well once it's mixed into the butter. <laughs> I'd put that on some merch. <laughs> Basil blunt. It just doesn't sound as good as if I say like a basil cigar. It doesn't have the same ring to it. Okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere here now. Gotta get this out. Whew! What a plant. I think I'll just put it on the log back here. Got risk of tippage? Maybe a small risk of tippage on that one. This one, not so much, though. Yeah, basil blunt merch, please. Okay, let's get into our avo. We'll kind of blitz that up. Maybe we'll mash it. Should we just mash it right into there or mash it in a separate bowl first? Oof, like just ripe enough. Misha's parsley has taken over the whole bed where you had potatoes. Ship that parsley worldwide. Flour does the trick, Sam. It's it's true. 
That's so crazy. Okay, now I'm gonna cut it like pretty nice and fine. Let's just switch to a paring knife. Chef's knife is a bit obnoxious for that. Oh, hello, sets and reps. Thank you so much for the raid. You have been chosen. The arena awaits you. Are we fighting? What was I chosen for? I'm honored. Welcome in, friendos. We got Monkey with us. Rusty Go Mike. Hello there. Ja08. Friendins. How is your stream? I'm guessing just by the name that you do maybe like a workout stream. So welcome, welcome. What's going on in this AVO here? There's a little bit of something hard. Anyone else ever had that? This thing is organic. Don't ask questions. Chosen for gains? Oh, God. Flex. You're from Brazil? Hello, Luke Tabeno. We fight sloth behavior. We're not very slothy here, so I think we'll be a-okay. <laughs> big gains time. Big, big gains. Thanks for the follow, monkey. Okay, so we're just prepping up our sides right now. This is also a good time for us to go check on our suckling pig. Let's go do that real quick. And thank you to my wonderful husband, Omdog, for gifting us up to sets and reps. Thank you, sets and reps, for sharing your community with us. Yeah, we're making sides. Let's go. Thank you for the follow as well, Ja. Okay, let's go over to the Traeger. Check on our suckling pig. I believe this is the third hour already. Let's take a look. She's been cooking at 275 Fahrenheit, low and slow the whole time. And this is a first for us here. This is a first. Looking good still. Nothing really to report. See a little bit of rendering up there by the ear, but other than that, looks happy. A bit of juice is underneath too. And we're thinking it's gonna take anywhere from six to eight hours for that. Yeah, the Traeger really has a roar. It's awesome, Taz. Okay, so let's reset our timer. We've been checking every 30 minutes or so. Boom, and then we can come back and keep prepping. Midnight in July, thank you for the follow. Okay, so we just kind of finished prepping our corn on the cob that we're gonna grill. There's the husks, and we're working on a avocado basil lemon butter we're switching things up we're having fun with it so we're gonna mash the avo into that butter mixture and then we'll spread that on the corn after it's been grilled so there's no burning more twirling monkey for the pig, we're doing it a little bit different today. We're kind of doing the pig the easiest way that you can start with. Uh, we don't have a rotisserie for the Traeger currently, so we cannot really do it the Lechon way. Yeah, smoked turkey, because we celebrate both Canadian Thanksgiving and American. It's really good. Done on the big green egg with pecan chips. Pecan wood. Gives really good flavor and color. Oh. <laughs> Scoop the avo, not in the container. Pro. We're making a mess. Yeah, I did say lechon, because that's another way that you can do a suckling pig, right? We don't have a rotisserie. Not yet, at least. Okay, let's mash this up. We don't even really know what we're doing with this. 
but we're making it. I might just come in with my potato masher. Because I would say we want this like pretty nice and smooth, right? Okay, I'm gonna go grab that, be right back. Let's try it out. I think it will fit in the container. That's what we got. Just set the spoon to the side for now while we're trying this out. Yeah, winning. And then we can give that a little tap -a and go again. I think this is going to be really nummies. Hey, Ghetto Bino, you've been lurking? Well, thank you for the lurk. Yeah, it started at 39 pounds was the total weight before cooking. We asked for one 30 to 35 pounds, but that's what they ended up getting from the local farm. So we weren't gonna be like, no, that doesn't work for us. Okay, well that's complete. That was really easy. And it looks so good. It smells good too, I will say that. If you don't have enough butter, add some avocado. Yum. Another three hours to go? Probably, I would say. Okay, so now that this is mixed, I'm just gonna add a small sprinkle of salt and pepper just to get it a bit seasoned through. If you don't season fat enough, it really coats your palate and kind of stops you from tasting all of the flavors properly. So just a pinch of salt and pepper really does the trick. We'll mix that up and then have a taste. Love the way it looks though. That should spread really nicely onto the grilled corn. It's really nice and fruity. Just a hint of basil, but that might increase in flavor as it sits. And yeah, just a hint of the lemon zest in there. Awesome. I'm happy that we tried it out and thanks for kind of like pushing me to try it out too. Sometimes I'm a bit wary of trying that stuff. Yeah, we've been going three hours now. And hey, Prouder, welcome, welcome. Put that to this side and then we'll just do a quick little wipe here. And next one we'll get into is our colorful cauliflowers. You made the Hong Shao Ru Chinese dish with a pork shoulder instead of belly the other day. Oh, right. It turned out great. Rock sugar and soy sauce reduction, basically. That sounds yummy. Happy to hear that it turned out awesome for ya. Oh, 
Okay, so that can go... Should be able to go into the fridge. I would recommend maybe pulling it out about half an hour before you plan to serve because the butter is going to harden in the fridge. So it'll be hard to spread that on the corn if it's rock hard. So basically take out the butter when you start cooking the corn on the grill and then everything will be happy. All right, I will return with cauliflower and we can check corn off the list. We did our foil baked potatoes already and our corn is all prepped with our butter. We even have some uh, sneaky zucchini if we need to use it up. Oh, okay, I was wrong. We didn't have purple cauliflower. We had green and yellow. <laughs> you slapped your screen because you thought it was the fly on it. RIP monitor. Look at these, so fancy. So now we're gonna take the Floretza cauliflower off of the stem there make sure that we don't cut it too small because we're going to be grilling this so we don't want it to fall through the grate come back over with our paring knife you can see there's a like a bit of discoloration on this one i think i'll just kind of gently trim that over the compost first before we cut it up any smaller There, good to go. What's up with the cauliflowers that have spirals inside the... Oh my gosh, why is the name spacing me right now? Concerto, I believe they're called. The Italian, Italian variety. They're so good too. So all I'm gonna do is take my paring knife and basically just start cutting the florets out gently. And I like to leave like a good amount of stem on cauliflower and broccoli when I grill it. Nothing wrong with that. Might even actually just twist this out if possible right now. So I can see more of where I'm working. There we go. Yeah, prepare for the cauliflower dust. So really we can say like no florets smaller than that because then they'll just kind of burn up on the grill. Mmm, curry and olive oil. Curry roasted cauliflower is really good. I will say that. That. That one, that and that, in there. This is all good to go. Maybe we'll just slice this one gently in half, starting by the stem, and then usually I just tear it apart. And that really minimizes the cauliflower dust that we're talking about. Is this one okay? Do that in half. This piece I think we'll be able to do into thirds. Oh, that one went a bit small. Those little pieces we'll have to just munch on probably.
Oh no, it fell apart. Too risky. Now these little pieces, usually I try and cut them like two or three of the smaller florets together. And cook them that way so they don't burn up. Bam. Okay, that stuff. How do I want to prep this? Here, I'll just pop it into one of our half pans. Because we'll toss the green and the yellow together. Yeah, barely any dust, as you can see. And that's another pet peeve, I would say. The cauliflower dust. Just the worst. Just cut a small amount of this core out. Again, to start. Just like that. Hello, Chef Negan. Yeah, morning? <laughs> Good afternoon. I mean, it's 1.25 p.m. here. Are you still in morning time? How's the weekend? How are things? I'm doing good. Doing really good. We're prepping up some colorful veggies right now to go with our suckling pig roast. And yeah, thanks, Bong, for the shout out. You guys aren't already following Chef Negan on Twitch. She's also a food and drink streamer, so go give her a follow. Don't know if she's cooking anything today. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, girl. Yeah, have you been doing a bit more traveling again? Did I see that earlier this week? Day off today? Nice. Well, hope you can take advantage of it. Hopefully you luck out with some awesome weather, everything like that. Enjoy it to the fullest. We're excited to eat everything. You're going to a new town on Tuesday. Sweet. I'll see if I can pop in and watch because that's my day off. Yeah, this green cauliflower definitely reminds me of broccoli, hey? So funny. It's kind of confusing to the brain. How's it going on my end? Good, good. I've been battling a bit of like a head cold this week, but other than that, I've been good. This. I think we'll just trim up some more of this stem and then try and use most of it, though. It's really yummy tasting. The homie's beard, Sam. <laughs> Sam's beard, always doing great. I take good care of it. I think I actually, I trimmed it up last week. Looking real schvelt. for Sammy's beard. Oh, nice one, Sam. Little clipperoo there. Okay, so now that the florets get pretty small in the center, I usually just kind of put this flat and then cut onto the cutting board. 
because that still minimizes any of the, the dust coming out. Trying to keep the same shape still, right? Something like that. Check it out. Tasty bits. Yeah, we're doing it whole right now. We're gonna be checking soon. Checking on the Traeger. We just checked not too long ago before you popped in. Okay, so these are just little munching pieces that I'll save. Just get them off of the board for us for now. Yeah, I love the purple cauliflower. Like the colorful ones, they don't taste any different. It's just fun to eat. Caffeinated couple, how are you doing today? Yeah, that's happening right meow. A first for this channel. I don't know if it's a first for Twitch, but definitely for our channel here. We've never done a suckling pig before. Okay, how should we cook the cauliflower? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you lived closer, you could come for snacks. I mean, the whole curry thing does sound good on cauliflower, but I don't think I really want to go with those flavors. Probably just some more olive oil. <laughs> Caffeinated, you're happy uncaffeinated. Good to hear. <laughs> okay, olive oil. Let me go see some of my like special salts. See if I can find anything delish to go with dinner. And thank you, caffeinated couple, redeeming a raffle entry. I also got all of the ones you redeemed yesterday into the mix. We are now for the first two days of the raffle, over a hundred entries, over a hundred entries already. So good luck. Have fun. Okay, let me go find a fancy salt. This one is pretty good. A Marshall's rub. I think that would be really yummy. This is what I found. Marshall's hot rub. They say it's for potatoes. But the ingredients, so cinnamon, garlic, sea salt, porcini powder, cayenne, star anise, clove, ginger. This unique blend can be sprinkled or rubbed on any potato to bring an earthly, worldly flavor inspired by Japanese holiday casseroles. I've done it on cauliflower before. And it's really yummy. It's like not full curry-ish flavor. Potato. Yeah, exactly, Bong. Labor Day in the US is like the unofficial end of summer. That's exactly why we're throwing a barbecue today. Payday, though? Yeah, maybe this week, Mish. <laughs> okay, let's dress this up. A bit of olive oil first. This is okay to season ahead of time. Get it oiled and ready for the grill. 
Don't go too crazy with the oil. Don't want any flare ups, that's for sure. And then I'll just sprinkle a bit of this over first. So we're just putting the seasoning on. There's a touch of salt in there, so it might draw out a bit of moisture, but not too much. And we'll do the rest of the salt and pepper right before it hits the grill. Just let this flavor kind of absorb in for an hour or two while the piggy's finishing. And then, I mean, eventually we'll have to get the egg lit. I'm just going to mix this with my hands. The egg will probably take a good half an hour to get lit and hot, ready to cook stuff. And then potatoes will probably take close to an hour, I'm going to say. That'll be one of the longer cook times for all of the veggie sides. And then everything else is basically cooked right over charcoal. So hot and quick. That looks like it's evenly mixed. Yeah, nice. Not too much left on my hands at all. I think cauliflower is just versatile. It's very, very versatile. You can put lots of different flavors with it. The potentiometer is Soldered. Nice one, Annie. And what does that do? <laughs> Refresh my memory. <laughs> okay, cauliflower is done. You can cross that one off. It's basically a volume mixing knob. Oh yeah, you're redoing some electrical sound equipment is that correct okay i'm gonna bring this to the fridge and i will return with green beans And we'll do peppers. So many veggies. Because health. Maybe even some zucchini too. Emergency evacuation, I saw a fly in the fridge. It's now gone. I talked about this this morning. I flicked it. Get that thing right there. Yeah, get it. Astra will take care of it. <laughs> oh no! Hi, Speed. Hello, friend. How are you doing? And thank you, thank you, thank you for the 20 months in a row resub. That's also an entry into the giveaway for you or the raffle going on this month. Yeah, we got the whole hog. What do we got for timing? Three minutes. Three minutes, we'll check it out. All right, so more, more veggies. We got green beans, we got bell peppers to grill, and we got some garden zucchini. Probably first one and easiest is dicing up the zucchini. So we'll deal with that first. Did 
Did I get the Facebook share the other day? Yes. Yeah, for the food truck. I giggled. <laughs> Thanks, caffeinated couple. Okay, one thing I am going to do just with this, give it a little trim on each end. Just a bit soggy. And then we'll cut this one in half too. They're really not too bad inside. This is like maximum size that you should grow it, I think, before it starts to suffer in flavor. Hmm. I'm getting warm and I'm making sure that I'm breathing properly today just because my nose is stuffed. I'm almost through mine. It's kind of making me feel icky right now, though. Okay, so Zuckers, I think probably the best way to grill this is in spears. So we'll do that. I'm going to cut it into quarters first, like this, and then we can go through one more time like that, and then you can pop it on the grill that way. You got lots of surface area to grill up. And zucchini is very good on the grill. Very, very good. Are you having a good weekend so far, Speed? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm gonna do right away here, caffeinated, is go fill my water bottle back up. Stay hydrated for sure, right? Because, yeah, the cold meds are quite dehydrating. Yeah, total price for the piggy was just over $200. There's no other way or no better way in your book than on the grill for Zook, right? It's so good. Just like something different. Okay, so I'm just gonna prepare my compost here. I'm gonna put the rest of our corn husks in there. And then we'll go check on the piggy. It's quite expensive, I will say, Mish. Considering that there is like a pretty good amount of loss just from the weight of the skin and the bones, right? Yeah, we did notice just recently though that a lot of food prices, especially meats, again, have gone up. Of course you can tell cute things about snails, madame. Why would that not be allowed? Just mowed the yard speed. Kiddo's down for a nap. Think I'm gonna take one here soon myself, yeah. Oh wow, you start a new job on Thursday leaving the marina sucks not really happy about it but you can't pass up the offer you got to turn wrenches for another company 20k more a year and paid benefits for the whole fam it makes sense right totally makes sense as scary as change always is it's usually for the best Okay, corn husk, shrapnel dealt with. So let's pop all of this just onto the tray. And zucchini I find really, really kind of lets the moisture out if you season it too far ahead. So let's just get them prepped on the tray and then we'll drizzle with oil later on until it's almost time to grill.
Notice that he really likes napping in the crevice under the moth ball or the moss ball. Go hide under it, take a nap, which gives you a panic attack, but it's cute as heck. He just likes having his own little space, probably. You've made an awesome home for him. So cute. Yeah, I should double up my water intake. Hey, caffeinated couple, need that. But then I'll just be running to the bathroom way more. <laughs> not, not the best for streaming, but it does uh, make you feel better. There's our peppers. Have one more sip of water. Oh, and let's check on Piggy. Let us take a look. Okay, you ready, Speed? You watching? There she is. We just take our cloth here. Just been giving her a wipe down. Making sure everything's real happy. It's looking awesome. And then we close it back up. Looking at 275 Fahrenheit. Make sure that's closed nice and tight. And then we will refresh our timer. So the foil is to protect those things from kind of burning up as it cooks, because there's not a ton of meat in the ear, as well as the snout. And you can kind of tell it's like on the outskirts of the animal, right? So it burns up a lot quicker. Cover it with foil the same way that you would protect like a pie crust if it starts getting too dark on the outside. So really it's just for presentation purposes. That's about it. Okay, let's get into our peppers. Once again, we don't want these cut too small either. How do I want to do this to finish it off. Maybe I'm just going to cut the core out with my paring knife since it was already cut into. Bam. Try and take care of some of the seeds. Give that a tap and then we'll also cut out like the spongy membrane. There's no real flavor there. Okay, that's good. And then the next ones will cut a bit differently, I think. So I'm going to cut it there along the top and along the bottom. And we'll slice into this. And then you just take your chef's knife, cut along the membranes again, and should be able to take out the whole core at one time. Like that. And then we just tap the couple seeds out. Good to go. And then this gets used. And then this part, I usually just kind of pick it off around the stem into nice chunks. I can see that there's a bit of dirt there from the farm, so we'll wash it up. And yeah, then there's really like no waste at all cutting it that way. This is always the funniest when there's peppers growing inside of peppers. It's like, how did this become a thing? Pepperception. <laughs> Thanks, caffeinated couple. It's like most of the things that I do on stream are things that I've done for a long time. And I do them a certain way because that's what I have found is the most efficient, works the best for me. If you want to adopt that for yourself, by all means, right? Okay, so that little pile can go into the compost as well. 
Your reapers grow reapers, yeah. Take that. <laughs> Orange peppers taste superior to other ones. I think they are the sweetest. I think they have the sweetest flavor. You're right. You are not wrong there. Okay, so let's just take our cloth. Get this taken care of. The dirty bits. The orange ghost peppers tend to be more citrusy, but you like the spicy heat, though. Of course you do, Eric. Spice up your life. Zeisius, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Okay, so, I mean, most of these little pieces here are basically good to go for the grill. I'm not going to cut them any smaller, otherwise they'll just fall through the grate. So the bottom parts we can just cut in half. And then these parts, I mean, I'll probably just cut this piece in half. And then... Take some of that dirt out as well. Sneaky dirts. Sneaky farm dirt. Probably cut that into thirds. Different shapes and sizes. Nothing too small. Nice bite sized pieces. Come back through this one. Cut some chunks like that and then do the same. So probably into thirds. Yeah, we're like basically eating the rainbow today. It's gonna be awesome. And all of these veggies are so good on the grill too. It's like a grilled veg platter pretty much. Okay. Pop that onto there. And then we'll dress the peppers with the zucchini when it comes time. <laughs> Bonk! <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, next one. Our green beans from the farmer's market as well. We'll take care of the rest of these. Probably just pop those in a bowl so we can toss them with some oil and seasoning later. So I'll grab that. When you roast stuff on the tray, I always put aluminum foil. Is it a bad habit? Not really, ghetto bino. It helps for not sticking. And then what else have I learned? So like most people throw the foil in the garbage after, right? But I did learn that if you wash off the foil as clean as possible, it can actually be just balled up and po popped in the recycling with the rest of the metal containers. I mean, that's a bit of a process, but at least it's not just going in the trash, right? I really try and minimize using those items as much as possible. Yeah, it's not very green. So all I'm doing with the beans is I'm lining up where the stem is and we'll just trim off that point as little as possible. And then typically I don't trim the other pointy end because once that's cooked, it softens up. Nothing wrong with that. So just gather a little handful and then cut the stem off. 
I might actually just go give these a little rinse. They look a bit dirty and dusty. Well, we can do that after it's been cleaned, though. Farm veggies. Yeah, Mingalig. See, you got to thank Lauren in person. Lauren, did you uh, luck out with a nap at all? Or are you still getting to that point? Well, look at this bean. Something was munching on there too. So I'll just pop that off. Oh, and this one. We don't want to cook anything that has a blemish like that either. Okay, carry on. growing beans is satisfying yeah it's fun hey when you just start to notice them popping out from underneath the leaves it's like oh my gosh there's actually beans growing there nice lauren you got a little rest that's good and hey wilson welcome welcome back hope you're doing good done really good so far though prepping our veggie sides i don't feel like it's taken us too too long it's only been a couple hours oh blackened triple tail over cheese grits is triple a fish That's my guess. Oh, that sounds so good. Almost there. This bean just looks worse for wear. <laughs> the last couple. The wife had a giant grass fed New York strip from a local farm with eggs. Oh my gosh. That sounds insanely good. <laughs> Annie, don't want to hear any tales of the young and the restless. <laughs> okay, just going to trim this. And oh, look at this one that snuck in. What the heck? Where did you come from? Any other ones? Sneaky beaners. Okay, the rest of them look good rest of them look good so let's clear off our board then like i said we're gonna go rinse the beans real quick give them a wash because i feel there's some residual dirt on there i also fill up my water bottle at the same time You're used to snapping each one individually, like an assembly line, Annie. 
I honestly don't know if that's any slower than how I did the, the way I just did. I try and do stuff as efficiently as possible. Thanks, Sammy. Brought some water out. Okay. I'm going to go wash up the beaners. I'll be right back. I'm going to mute because I'm going to go blow my nose as well while I'm in the house. And fill up my water. Sammy's out here with you. I think we're getting ready to light the eggs. Stuff like that. Because it's going to take a little bit. Okay. Hold tight. Let's switch to that scene for you. And away we go. I'll be right back. I'm back. Yeah, set title. Bearded man devours peach. Oh. Whew. I'm getting tired. I'm gonna have to take a little break soon here. And that's okay. Yeah. Are you spraying? Yep. Okay. Let's switch up the scene then. We still had 12 minutes. The desserts already made, Mish. We made the... The raspberry lemon bars yesterday. All we gotta do today, cut them up, put the powdered sugar on top, and put them on the serving platter. Yeah, it's getting wrinkly. Can you tell how it's starting to cook and render now? It's actually looking really great already it's exactly how it should look <laughs> yeah poor guy <laughs> it's literally just cooking spray and sad to say that's what most people say to use because it really helps it brown evenly to uh up the ante, you could use duck fat spray, but we did not have that, sad to say. Okay, so 
zucchinis, peppers already prepped up here. Just washed the beans. Those are good to go. So we'll give those a toss later on with some oil and salt and pepper. Just gonna let some of the water out again. It's not too wet. That dog is dead. We got a roasted dog. <coughs> what would happen if we didn't spray it? It probably wouldn't brown and crisp as much. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't get crispy at all. It'd be more, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Be more soft. Okay, so this stuff can go away. We don't want to oil or season too early because then it's going to get wet and you'll have issues later when we cook it. There's that. I did question mark beets. Just because I didn't know if we were going to have to cook those today or not with the rest of the veg. Let me see what Sam thinks. Do you think we have enough? Or should I pack up the beets as well? No, I think we have enough. If we need anything, we can just mix the salad. Salads real quick. Okay. And then don't eat any more of the fruit because we need that for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I know. I know. Okay. So we're good with that. Yep. So I just have to cut up the lemon bars then. Yep. And plate those up. Yep. Okay. You can take an hour break. I'll grab those. They are underneath. So. Oh, Puffer. Hi, thank you for the help. Puffers. Yeah. She says Kate went inside. Gotta go check. <laughs> it would have been a soggy skinned, wrinkly blind pig. So I remember when we made these like first thing yesterday on stream, our raspberry lemon bars. Why did they become raspberry? Cause that's the jam we had. So one thing that happened when I put the wrap on yesterday is it kind of stuck to the top little layer here. So that's going to maybe get torn off a touch. I'll try and go really gentle so it doesn't mess it up too much. Well, that wasn't bad at all. And then I'm planning on cutting these into 12. So I did like a little dollop of the jam so that you can have a bit in each bite when we cut it. Holy madam. That one snail is making lots of babies. And yeah, they're not upside down either, Lauren. <laughs> Success. Okay, just grabbing a cutting board. We'll take the parchment out. We'll cut them up. Actually, why don't I do a transfer this way? Yeah, that worked good. And now next, we're gently going to peel the parchment away. And then we can cut our squares or the bars, whatever you want to call them. And like most people would even out the edges when cutting, but that's just a waste. I don't think that's necessary. Looks awesome though. I think you have to even out this edge here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Sam says maybe this one edge here needs it. And probably best to use a serrated knife for slicing. That or the one that you always use the brisket. The brisket knife? I like this one. I'm comfortable with that. That's trash. 
Just this small edge right here? Yeah, that's that small edge there. They set up real good. And the crest looks awesome. Thank you. But now the other edges are uneven. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you gotta trim Okay, now I gotta trim the other side too. Oh, that one was barely pro. All right, next. So we're just going to go across this way. Maybe make your center line first and work off of that. Reviews in. Um, 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 um. Perfect. Does that look like center? Yeah. Bam. And then from there, I usually just go one, two. Does that look good in that? Mish, thank you very much. Gift and a sub to Zeus Alicious. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Zeus Alicious. Mish, that's an entry into the raffle for you. Thank you for helping to grow our food and drink community. Deary, can you show? Yes. He went for the bite. That looks really perfect. Nom. Anomalies. Might be my new favorite lemon bar recipe. I love the way they're cutting. So clean too. Okay. Now. That's really, really. Is way better than the last recipe. I redeemed myself. And the jam note? Mm. The jam with the raspberry is probably better than oh, strawberry. This is good. I know Cooking Girl was saying she wanted to try some of her blackberry preserve in there, which would also be mm -hmm. good with lemon. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna lay these out for presentation purposes. Do I wanna just put it on a couple plates? Or... What are we feeling? It's sticky, it's sticky Sam says. <laughs> of course it is. No. Or I'll just uh, take them off of the parchment and put them onto the cutting board like this. Yeah, or that. Okay. I kind of got messed up underneath. Maybe not too bad. This is what I'm gonna do. Boom. Boom. Yummo indeed. Good Was eat. the crust really good as well? Perfect, nice and buttery. Like that, that, that was really perfect. I love the way that it just like peeks out of the middle. I'm also gonna get like asked like, what happened to the other lemon bar? Like, this one is so satisfying. Just the cross crack. Keeping them separated. So they're easy to grab. They look like blueberry craters. Raspberry craters. That is a good bite. Okay, this is for me. What do you think? Do you like lemon? Oh, it is a lemon dog. I almost forgot about this. She's a lemon dog, guys. She 
She may or may not also have a sweet tooth. She's so good. The scraps went in the compost. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is what I'll do. I'll take some of the lemon off of the knife. Well, I'll have to go wash my hand in the house, though. That's for the lemon dog. Look it. Why are you such a lemon dog? You're so cute. She's like, I've been waiting for those bars since yesterday, guys. Whoa, there was sounds. Oh, thank you. Pro clean. <laughs> Good to go. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Do you know where the icing sugar is in the bin? Okay. I think you can top right. And then we'll just need the little sifter to get it over uh, there. On your way out, bring the other battery as well. Bring the other battery, okay. BRB. Okay, I'm back. <coughs> he did steal the lemon bars. Lauren, thank you for letting me know. What the heck? Did you... Did we powder sugar them or we have to wait until later for that? Yeah, I guess the powdered sugar will probably just melt in the fridge if you let it go for a few hours in there. Okay, quick wipe up. So, do we start the egg yet, or we're gonna wait a little bit longer? No. Okay, keeping the oil out. Or I can pop out your switch if you would like to play it. That's okay. We can just hang out. I can bring just the switch out here and chat with people while we're watching things cook. Yeah, you don't really need the powdered sugar, just it adds a nice look to it. That's about it. Ampsand, how are you? So a suckling pig has been going since what? 10 a.m. our time, right? Ish, 10. So four hours in now, we have our purple potatoes prepped. The first thing we did when I started today is we quartered them, dressed them with some garlic oil, olive oil, salt and pepper, wrapped them up for the grill. We got some fresh peaches and cream corn ready. And to go along with that after it's grilled, we made an avocado lemon basil butter. So it's like green. I thought it'd be really yummy. Maybe even a little sprinkle of feta over that when it's done. I guess we'll see. And then our grilled green beans, we got yellow and green cauliflower, as well as some bell peppers. So lots of good green veggies to grill up. Oh, also zucchini. 
And that's pretty much it. Should not need a sauce for the pork meat at all. Usually you just do maybe a spritz of some vinegar and extra seasonings at the end once you taste it. But other than that, it's not typically served with a sauce or anything like that. I do have some extra Caesar dressing in the fridge. That could be good with the potatoes. I know that, a bit of creaminess. Yeah, it's got its own sauce, Wilson. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, I don't think we'll need the beets, hey? Just take that off of the list. Yeah. We'll save that for next week. I said feta, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I did. So much seasoning. Okay, so we got our olive oil ready for finishing our veg later on here. And when's the next time we're gonna check on this? Oh, nice cookie. It's 2 19. Okay, so 40 minutes we'll check on the piggy again. I'm just going to take a little break, guys, have a little rest up because, yeah, we'll be doing a bit of entertaining later after stream, too. So I don't want to get too tired out. Yeah, sneaking a bit of feta into there could be good. You can't go full feta because it doesn't have the melt factor, but a bit in there, yum. Yeah, feta and spinach would be delish. You can just go relax inside. You can just talk from the iPad. Yep. We will reset this timer then. Yep. We'll come out when that goes off. Okay. Yep. It got moved a little bit. I'll just do this. Perfect. 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 Get Traeger noise, guys. Okay, real quick before I go. Hi, FCB. How are you doing, friend? So good to see you. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Yeah, sounds good, Bong. This is where you say good day. Want to pick up some wine shipments. Have a safe trip. I hope everything goes great. And have a good rest of your Sunday. We will see you tomorrow, maybe for menu planning for the week.
FFCB. That's two more entries into the raffle for you.
72. So I think I'm um, right on the mark. Uh, it seems like they're cooking really nice and even. Yep. Okay, just adjusting the audio again for us. So 170, 172, and then, okay, we're bringing that over to the egg. So I'll just take the counter off then for now. Okay. Yeah. And now we're gonna get the eggy ready. Thank you as well, B tree. I thought you were already following, but thank you for the follow. It's looking really good, hey? So we wanted about 20 more degrees than that, so. Seems like it's cooking really nice and even. Now we're gonna get the extra large big green egg set up with charcoal so that we can cook all of the sides, the potatoes and all the veggies to go with the pork. Cause well, we don't have an oven. So we make an oven. And yeah, thank you for the little rest guys. I really needed that. Feeling very sleepy today. Hi, Bumble Bunnies. How are you doing? That's just the cast irons. Oh, you're getting the grates out from under. Is that what? Oh, you do one from top three, correct? Yeah. Did I just nap or chill? I was thinking about napping, and then I was like, honestly, if I fall asleep now, I probably won't want to get up later, and then I'll get grumpy. So I'd rather that not happen. So yeah, I just chilled, drank lots of water. Yeah, we're doing good, Bumble Bunnies. We are doing a okay. Oh, Adam. I know. You want to bring the vacuum over, or? Yep. I was gonna ask you if we needed the vacuum. We gotta clean some of the ash out before we load up any more charcoal. We're all plugged in, ready to go. Oof, look at all that dust. Ready? Yes. Now? So you just vacuum all of the loose ash out of the bottom so that you get nice even airflow for the coals to stay lit. You don't have an uneven fire. It's basically the hardest part of maintaining these things. 
Which really, if we think about it, is not hard at all. <laughs> And now, oh, you're gonna even sneak in. I'll get the broom. A few wood chunks, Sama? Yeah. Today is your pet's first birthday, Bumble Bunny, so you're using it as an excuse to have cake. I like that excuse. That's pro. And happy birthday to your pet as well. Yeah, caffeinated couple with a side of water. You need an open. Look at this legend coming back out of the blue with a 12 month sub in a row. Whoa. That one, you have to cut. that one we really have to cut all the way? Yeah. What happened to you? Okay. Probably. Yeah, 12 months. Let me get the VIP badge set up. The Ash Shaker apparatus. Yeah, I don't know about that thing, but we've had a lot of good luck just using a vacuum simply like that. Community. Rules. Oh my gosh, Nola. How have you been? Welcome back. Welcome back. Came in to say hi, chef. Just got power back last night from the storm. Yep. Oh my goodness. Are you okay? Okay, setting up the new VIP. 62 out of 80 success that will just be a refresh on your part b tree and you should notice a new diamond beside your name <laughs> annie there's a lot of ash shakers on TikTok. <laughs> yes yes there is norages did you get a peek at the piggy or nah Are you keeping on going here? Or you want me to step in? I'm just making sure that this doesn't fall. Okay. I can let you light it since you have the egg mitts and everything on anyways. Yeah, it is a shop back ghetto Bino. That is a very important part to note as well. Make sure you're using a shop back. I don't think a regular one would work. Bring the camera over and show the pig. Okay. Nordis was too slow. right in ready norges are you here now and this is for nola too your fam is safe still dealing with a bunch of stuff but let's keep this positive and happy here you got it dude yeah send in lots of love your way okay can you hear the sizzles oh my gosh that's looking good starting to drip now okay now we'll go back over to the eggy
Yeah, close the window, Brand. <laughs> Where's Brand doing laundry? There he is. Okay. Close the window. <laughs> Got some good ones. And FCB, thank you so much. Gifting this sub to Nola for the win. Nola's been with us for two months in a row now. Thanks for being part of the kitchen crew. <laughs> yeah, Ghetto Bino, you can literally eat any part of the pig and it's gonna be amazing. Oh, I mean, we're not making Sammy's today. We're just doing like a simple little grill up with some veggies and stuff like that for the sides. But that's a good way to use it up. We have lots of croissants. Cold pork is leftover talk. It's true. Okay, let me switch up this view for a sec so I can talk to Bee Tree while this is heating up. That one works. Bee Tree, this is a nice welcome back. First message didn't post. I was gonna say, you never said nothing. Aloha to you as well. Yeah, I, I forgot that you're in Hawaii. Smells like luau time, almost, right? I know that typically the luau pork is done in the ground, right? So this is a bit different today, but cannot wait to try that one day. Whew, that is smoky. I like it though. I haven't cooked some egg in a while, actually. Yeah, I know, it feels good. I just keep laughing. Can you guys see? I point to it. A dog? <laughs> in a sawdust pile right there. She's waiting patiently. This is her, this is her life right now. Things are rough. <laughs> Tell me you're not pouting without telling me you're not pouting. <laughs> I'm dead. Clemmy, isn't it? She's so cute. That's where she lives now. She is seriously the cutest. She was actually, I have to say, she was very concerned yesterday when we brought the pig home. She didn't know whether she was excited about the smell of the meat or whether she was concerned about the death of the animal. It was very interesting to watch how she reacted. <laughs> yeah, that dog's behaving like a nappy cat. Yeah, she has been very cat-like today, cooking koalas. It's a good way to put it. We'll do that view. Nice one, Sama. We are lit. It's lit. Kat's been acting like a dog today. Likes to play fetch with her toys. That's so cute. 
Yeah, any kitties that do that, adorable. That's what I think, Nola. Yeah, she was super concerned yesterday. It was adorable. But like, she eats raw food. So that's why she was very interested in the smell of it. Wait. You just moved to our neck of the big pond bee tree? So you're not in Hawaii anymore? Wait, are you on Canada land? Or just on like mainland North America? It's not my dog, it's actually my brother and his partner's dog because we're staying here where they're at. And her name is Astra. Mary, the lemon bars turned out amazing. We have cut them up. Sammy has had a taste of one piece. The only thing we haven't done yet, Mary, was garnish with the little bit of powdered sugar on top. Just if you do that too early, it'll kind of melt back into the dessert anyways. BRB. I'll go grab them so I can show you. Smoking. Look at the goodness. So Sammy's working on cleaning up the grill right now, the plate setter, all that stuff. Here, let's do this view real quick. There's the lemon bars. Lemon bars with little dollops of raspberry jam inside. And then they just need a final garnish of a touch of powdered sugar on top. Cause why not? It's gonna look pretty. And hi, John the Young. Yeah, Finn, Finn's at work, but she loves lemon. So she'll be able to have one of these when she gets home later. Very pumped to try it. And yeah, I haven't tried it yet. We'll try it later once we have them garnished, but Mary, this was one of the easiest recipes to make and turned out way better than the last lemon bars. Is this for a catering gig? No, we're just doing a little like end of summer barbecue sort of dealio this weekend, John the Young, having a couple of friends over that we've not seen in a long time. And thank you, Cookie, for the 1,380 biddies evening out our food truck fund. 616,000, that's a 62%. Cannot wait to cook you all the deliciousness. Okay, I'm gonna pop these back in the fridge. What's one, I think I loved this one the most, the way it had like just the little cross section crack. It does smell pretty good, FCB. People must be wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised no one's knocking on the gate. We scare them all away with our big trucks. It's good. Yeah, I came in for one second. Go, go back to your sawdust pile. It's good. It's good. Come here. It's okay. Yeah, get your stretch. Get your stretches. What? What? <laughs> That's a sawdust dog. Okay, so grill is closed right now anyway. So let's go back to this one for now as we're burning off. Jesus is in that bar? Yeah, the cross meesh? He must be. Oh, yes. The Oreo cookie salad. Yes, we have. Maybe we'll have a bite right now. It's a pretty good bit of it. Taken out already though. Wonder who did that? 
breakfast. Blizzard test. Okay, I'll let you do that. I'm gonna go take a quick bathroom break because I literally chugged a bottle of water before this. Okay, I'm back, I made it. Okay, did he scoop all this stuff out of there? Norges, take care. Good to hear from you again as well. And thank you for the resub. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Stay safe out on the seas. And I hope that you get lots of good fishes. Don't work too hard. We'll be hopping back and forth between SeaTac and Hawaii. Does Hawaii still owe us to chefs the honeymoon? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know when that's gonna be happening, right? Have not got my hopes up for any time soon. Okay, open up chat. I don't know why it stopped focusing. I'm only gonna have one scoop. That's enough for me. It's like the perfect cookies and cream pudding. I'm on a constant honeymoon anyways, Bumble Bunnies. Oh, it's like almost too sweet, but not. It's so good, Mary. Are you thinking that your hubby's gonna like it? I don't even know of a person who wouldn't like this. Yeah, I've never met a person that doesn't like Oreos, though. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did not see that there. Out of all the days this week, today is the day I feel most out of it. I don't understand. I got nothing. I feel like the dog. I'll just go lay in the sawdust pile. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> the cookie. I think the cookie is better than the filling. The cookie for sure. Yeah, the chocolate wafer cookie. That's good. Okay, going back to you right now. Cookie agrees with the cookie. 
Is there any food I don't like? Liver. Liver is a big one for me. I'm quite particular about it. The only way I'll like maybe eat it is in a high quality mousse or a pate of some sort or yeah, like a country pate where you maybe sneak a bit of liver in there. <laughs> you didn't miss the lemon bars. I've not tried them yet, Cooking Girl. We just did a little like show off pre-icing sugar for Mary who wanted to make them for herself maybe this upcoming week. I know that she didn't have all the ingredients to do it with us yesterday. Cool, you're painting? That's the only food you can eat is liver. I think that's a big one. Ghetto Bino chicken liver Lebanese style is OMG so good. How do they do it Lebanese style? Right, Cookie. Like if anything, a really good and well-prepared foie gras. Other than that, it's kind of pushing it. But like then again, foie itself is not the most humane and sustainable thing to eat either, right? It's very much like an experience, a treat. It's not an everyday thing. But yeah, like out of all, all foods, most people don't love liver. Liver is the only thing you can't do along with hearts and then beets. Heart is okay. And heart's supposed to be like very good for you as well. But yeah, beets I absolutely adore. Is it just the dirt flavor for you, Cooking Girl, that you don't love beets? <laughs> Bee tree. Yeah, spoken like a pro groomy already chef sam so good ghetto so lebanese style ton of olive oil salt and garlic and you finish with lemon juice i probably still couldn't do that yeah chicken liver is definitely way better than beef liver in my mind as well yeah i cannot do beef liver chicken liver is what it's gotta be It's not even the dirt cooking grill, it's just the beet itself. You can actually get it down now without having a gay reflex though. <laughs> That's good. Okay, I guess we're done with our prep list pretty much. All we gotta do is finish the sides, make sure the piggy's all happy. Mm-hmm. Probably 350 Fahrenheit for the potatoes to start. And then near the end, we can turn it up maybe a bit higher for the veggies. Get a little bit of crispage on the potatoes. Good to go. No can. That's a few smokers. It is. Yeah, we are, both myself and my husband are Big Green Egg Ambassadors for Canada. And then this one over here, the one Mini Max is actually my brother's. So they're not all ours. And then we have the Big Traeger that's cooking the suckling pig today as well. Get in there. It's getting happy. Very smoky. Titan, you're throwing livers at Lauren. Pro poor Lauren. <laughs> poor Lauren. I can tell it's smoky because it's making my eyes look real funny. <laughs> yes. But that's usually what happens when you burn off a bit of the soot. And it's important that you do that, otherwise it's going to make your food taste weird. If you leave that in there. <laughs> right, caffeinated. The one time I was able to get liver down was when your sister made it with a ton of sautéed onions. I think it was mostly just <laughs> eating the onions and you called it a success. Hey! <laughs> Don't even throw that mustard at me. Oh my gosh, Titan. He's on a tear right now. 
Yeah, live or let die, Annie. Food fight already? I wasn't I wasn't prepared. Maybe I am though. Throw this lemon right at ya. Okay, we're patiently waiting. Maybe I will pop my chair again. Yeah. Conserve my energy. Jim Belushi just entered chat. <laughs> <laughs> What's a food that Sammy won't do? Liver. Liver. Raw onions. Ball, ballpark mustard, scrambled eggs. I think that's it. That's it? Uh, yeah, it's probably a couple more, but. We're pretty good at eating everything. That smoke's just rolling. Rolling! Just so you guys know, I'm like literally just below the camera. Oh, there we go. Kate face. I'm trying to stay out of the smoke. You just got some moose from a customer a couple of months ago and it's so good. I That's what moose. I've heard. I've never had it. Do it up. You want me to switch the view? No, that way you're just not going to get smoky. Oh, okay. Yeah, Titan, I'll eat scrambled eggs if I have to, but why would someone want to miss out on a runny egg yolk? Yep. That's how Sam is. Yep. Bumble, raw onion is not your favorite either. I feel like that's all you can taste after taking a bite. Me too. And it actually like kind of upsets my stomach too. If I have way too much raw onion at one time. It makes me feel very sick. I don't understand that. Yeah, it's all about the dip, right, Cookie? Dip that toast in the yolk. I'm not really a dipper person, but Sam Defo is. Oh yeah, for an English breakfast, you gotta have the runny yolk. They're sunny side up, yeah? Or just fried over easy. Annie's a big dipper person. And then as we're heating up the big green egg with the charcoal, you can tell that it's getting closer to being able to cook with as the smoke gets more and more clear. Or a jammy egg. Yeah, that's like, that is pushing it for me, Lauren. Jammy egg is like the perfect, perfect runniness for me. I'm kind of a weird egg yolk person sometimes. What's it at now? 180 off both. 180F on both. Only 10 more degrees, guys. And then that Maybe thing can rest. Another hour, and then we'll put it down to cool down. And just hold temp. And that'll just rest out while the potatoes and everything else cooks. So, Mary, I don't do toast soldiers with an egg in the holder, but Sam, grew Sam up grew up stuff. on that. And I have the holders, and I'm oh, able to do that. We have a couple of them around, Annie. I'll never get rid of them. Yep, I got nope. them sent to me from Sammy's mom. 
Do a little crack around the top, peel off the top a little bit, take off that white, dunk your, put, crack your egg yolk, put some salt in there, give it a little stir, dunk in your buttery eggs or buttery toast, and then scoop out the entire egg and put it in your mouth. Yeah, I don't, mm. I don't think I could eat my egg like that. So I'd be a terrible German. Terrible. And I can't take you there. Oh no. I gotta Sorry. practice. I just don't have to go for breakfast. It's okay. It's wonderful. I've never done it properly with you. We've never done dippy toasts. Cause I'm just like not a dippy toast person. <laughs> Nice, Lauren. 74.9 pots and pans. My dad's savage and he just cracks it with a knife and cuts it through and rips it off. Wow. Yeah. My mom taught me the proper way. You crack the top a little bit and then peel all around. So it's good. Yeah, right, Mary. You watch a bunch of British shows and it's normal for them. Also, Immediate 88. Hello. Hello, friend. I'm just having a quick seat here. Smoke is rolling. Yeah, you'd be a good fit, Titan. Doggo. What's happening? She's watching. Oh, she's waiting. Come on. <laughs> That's cool, Annie. They have fish houses. Okay, you don't have to touch my hands because these are food hands. But how are you? Are you doing okay? That's really nice. You're a nice dog. Yeah, you are. You're not even mean. It's a nice dog. That's really nice. <laughs> Stop smelling my hand. She's like, your hands smell good though, Auntie. Is that what a fish house is? Is if you catch the fish, they'll cook it for you? Okay, not normally. They just specialize in cooking different fishes. I don't think I've ever had carp in my life. I've had a lot of trout though. Carp is amazing in Taiwan. Whoa. They just fry it whole or what? Maybe we'll switch this. There we go. That's better. I'll be in the bottom corner. Excuse me. Cooking girl, your son got a nice trout last week. Lately smoked for him for fresh eating. So good. So good. Yeah, small Kate. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I am very good at fishing, Titan. Very, very good at fishing. I never really get skunked. I'll carry the fish and bait the hooks and you'll reel them in, okay. I'm in. I, 
think my part is harder though, isn't it? I guess depending on the size of the fish. We're just prepping the coals right now, cooking girl. Just evening them out so they don't get too hot. We wanna cook the potatoes around 350 Fahrenheit. Just climbing past like 300 right now. Lauren, you've only ever caught small, smallmouth bass and catfish. Really? Wow. Yeah, I've done, I grew up here in Alberta doing a lot of lake fishing growing up. So jackfish, pickerel, all sorts of that stuff. I don't know if we ever did trout or anything like that. And then I was lucky enough that we met people on the island, like our great friend Zach, who their family has been fishing there for over a hundred years. And I was able to do some ocean fishing as well. It was really fun. You leave in the middle of the morning. I think we left at like two or three a.m. or something. Zach's actually currently in Calgary. Yeah. And Jess. Yeah, his girlfriend, my friend Jessie, is. I think she's finishing up. This will be her last round of schooling. She's into some sort of biology, having to do with like invasive species and stuff in Canada. And she's going to school at University of Calgary, I believe, or somewhere in Calgary. So yeah, he's actually visiting her right now. I think that's the farthest inland Canada he's ever gone. So I'm curious to hear what he thinks of it. <laughs> and yeah, we've been talking to Paul a lot, Zach's dad. He's been sending us updates and stuff like that. Everyone's doing really good. Okay, still evening out the egg. Almost time. We'll let that smoke clear a bit more. See how it looks like very white still? Not the best. It will make your food taste weird. Whoa, do you see those two flies like fighting around the, the camera? It's like on my phone right now. I'm upset. They're showing off. Oh my God. Ah, it's against TOS. What is this? Get out of there. <laughs> We got pork butts and fly bus live on stream. That's a first. I hope that never happens again. I'm actually disgusted. <laughs> Ban. Ban that fly. Yeah, how rude. Hey, at least it's not bugging my food. I will be honest. Yeah, they just keep like flying around on my phone, these two weirdos. I think we might have to get rid of it. They had their 15 seconds of fame. That's it. Yeah, it's very smoky. You don't cheap out by Komodo Joe. Komodo uh, charcoal? Yeah. What do they do to it? I don't know. <laughs> Look at this fan. I know. I'm glad I'm down here. I'm in like a safe spot because the fan's like blowing all the smoke away from me. It's giving me a bit of a headache right here. Why don't you go out of the smoke? I'm out of the smoke now. Okay. okay. Bee tree. That's really cool. Thank you very much, Bee Tree. Paying it forward, gifting a sub to Girly Doe. Welcome back to the kitchen crew, Girly Doe. You've been subscribed for two months in a row already. Thank you for now your six gifted subs to the channel, Bee Tree. I appreciate that. 
girly dough. Feel free to ask away any questions that you may have about what goes on here. We're all here to learn together. Okay, I gotta leave this area for a sec. He's smoking us out. Oh, it actually looks like we got some clouds coming in. Random rain cloud? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Random thunderstorm rolling yeah. over. This will be fun. It's raining there right now, Cookie? Yeah. Just like walked away and saw that there's literally a thunderstorm coming over. That'll be nice. It'll cool everything down. <laughs> that <look> outside. Holy! <laughs> hey, thanks. That's great. Still 23 degrees, though. That's good. You're a huge lurker? Well, I super appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know, too. You watch every time when we cook? Just got home from work? Oh, that's amazing. You should use, if you would like, you can use your pots and pans for a raffle redemption this month. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you lurk all the time, you probably have a bunch of pots and pans points saved up watching the stream. If you wanna use them for a raffle, that we're doing this month. It's 20,000 pots and pans for every entry. Doesn't cost you anything. I gotta get out of here. Smoke was getting me, guys. Phew. I don't even know what you guys are watching right now. Pro view. Yeah, this is Finn's hop monster. It's the best. It's, oh my gosh, my stupid phone. I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> and then it will replace it, okay. And Christian, thank you for the follow. She's playing. She got the moth. Oh, we can't stay. It is raining. <laughs> I just had a big raindrop on my arm. Hello, Mint and Megs. Hello, hello. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for the raid. How was your stream today? And what did you get up to? Kitsch Monster. We got Al Jasaba, hello. Hello, Mint and Megs, as well as Faux Melt. How is your Sunday going today? Or maybe depending on where you are, it might be Monday already. Hello, Just Gigi. And Annie, thank you for the 500 biddies. I would say that's another entry into the raffle for you, but you maxed them all out on the first day. 
I do appreciate the bits for the food truck fund though. So thank you for that. Five more entries for you. Did I miss gifted subs dust? I'm on mobile right now, so I'm not seeing everything. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Dustin, for gifting five subs. Yeah, now we gotta go back in. I think it's clearing out though, Sam. I think it's getting much better than before. Yeah. Right in front of my dirty compost bucket. Perfect. Okay, thank you guys for the gifted subs as well. And yes, you know that's five more entries for you. I got the ledger started. That way I'm keeping it real fair. Yeah, just wait. You got charcoal bag. It's good. Get in there. <laughs> yeah, that's where the pig is. Oh, she's like, yeah, I'll watch this. Thank you for the follow mint and Megs as well as Kitsch Monster. Oh, nice. You made traditional full English breakfast. We are literally just talking about that. Everyone was kind of saying how they like their eggs. And one person was like, yeah, for full English, it's got to be runny. Awesome. Well, I hope it turned out great. Hello to Cook Bing. Yeah, behind the scenes, it was really good. Awesome. Typically on Sundays, we do a quick and easy stream, usually some sort of breakfast. But today, a bit different is we wanted to kind of finish up summer with something special to share with our friends and yeah, just our friends. And we're doing this piggy today. I think it's almost done. And then we're just heating up some charcoal so that we can do all the sides to go with the pig. We're gonna do foil roasted potatoes, grilled corn, grilled peppers, grilled zucchini, and grilled green beans. Should be really delish. We made a special butter to go on the corn after it's grilled. We did butter, avocado, basil, and lemon zest, and it's super tasty. It was so good and so fun. I love making breakfast. Super quick cook, pretty easy cleanup after. And breakfast is very inexpensive to make at home too. Torino, how are you, my duder? Thank you for popping by, my fellow Canadian. I like my eggs sunny up and runny, so when I put ketchup on, oh, you're the worst. I get this awesome sauce that I can mop up. That's all I have to say, I'm dead. No, nope. can't do it. Are you okay? What happened? From the Traeger? Yeah. Oh no. Do I need to do anything for you? Are there mosquitoes there? I will be honest, like typically Alberta is known to be very bad with mosquitoes in the summer, but Compared to the yellow jackets, the wasps this year, not bad at all. Had way more issues with pesky wasps. I've not really noticed any mosquitoes at all. We've lucked out. And hi, Dark Onyx. Welcome, welcome. Sammy didn't burn. I think he said he cut himself a bit on the stainless. Yeah, it is sharp when he moved the chair for Doggo. How much longer timber? Pig's almost done and then it's gonna have to rest. The egg is just at 350 Fahrenheit now and it looks like Sam has put the potatoes on. So potatoes will probably take, what? 45 minutes to an hour to roast in there. And then the rest of the vegetables, the corn will be about 15 minutes and probably same for the rest as well. We'll just lay everything out on the rack. Yeah, John, it wasn't this, wasn't as bad this year, right? Maybe it was the smoke, maybe. 
And I think it was also quite dry. So we didn't have nearly enough rain to even get those batches of mosquitoes building up in the stagnant water. Yeah, you're probably right, Torino. Insects kind of go in cycles over the years. One year it's mosquitoes, then it's black flies, and then it's wasps, etc., etc. Yeah, very, very dry this year. Luckily, no real fires in Alberta. Lots of scary fires in DC. Hello, Mr. Porritz. Welcome back. You're back for more. So, potatoes are on the egg now. I don't even know what the scene is. Oh, we're just doing behind the scenes. Yeah. We're just chat skin. Yeah. So potatoes are cooking. What, we'll let those go for about half an hour and then yeah. start the rest of the stuff? Yeah. 40 minutes on the pig, give or take. Yeah, ish, for sure. Yeah. And then we'll just turn the smoker down really, really low. Is it has a holding cycle? Yeah, you start right off. Okay. And then it will stay warm until everything else is ready. Hey, Canadian Black Wolf. Yeah, right now we are working towards a double door fridge, which will be put to use for stream and will also be going into our mobile commissary kitchen that we're working on. Spreading the deliciousness. Right, Puppers? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Oh, there was a disturbance. She heard you move the fan. Hey, hey come back. back. Yeah. It's good. There was nothing. Get your butt up here. Oh, <laughs> it's good. Whoa. We got that wasp or fly. Caffeinated, your meals are always so balanced and healthy. Growing up, did your family cook and eat like that as well? Yeah, I'll say 100%. Is like, I grew up playing competitive soccer, so I kind of always needed to eat really good, let's say. And my mom would always make really balanced meals like that. Is there was always a protein, some sort of starch to fill you up and some sort of veggie, usually with greenery, right? And that way you stay healthy. Everything in moderation. Yeah, I don't like eating and not feeling good afterwards. So that's why I always plan out my menu that way. Am I watching the Canada-USA game tonight? I wasn't planning on it, John Leung. What game is that? One thing that Sam and myself do is we watch Formula One, which please no spoilers, guys. We haven't watched the race yet today. They're racing in the Netherlands. But yeah, we'll be watching that later tonight. You're still on quality? Okay, phew, phew, face plant. <laughs> we started a bit of it, like a couple minutes, that is it. Oh, the Soccer World Cup. Canada's actually in the final round? That is amazing. Go Canada. Yeah, I will say for someone who grew up playing a lot of soccer, I really don't watch it at all on TV. I never have. I just like playing it. And I have dust. That's actually kind of what got us into watching F1 was the Drive to Survive series on that Netflix. That was so good on Netflix. I watched it and then I was like, I think Caitlin will enjoy this. So good. And then we started watching Formula One on just cable. I got sick of the commercials and not being able to watch them because the show didn't take. So... Come closer. Thing. Just for your talking, come closer so they can hear it, better. It's the one thing that uh, we pay for and we enjoy watching as a sport. 
Yeah, the Canadian women's soccer team is actually pretty legit. I have had some of my friends actually played for the U18 women's team when we were growing up. Very proud of them. <laughs> yeah, we might have some meat sweats or meat sweats, White Dove. It's also the reason why we're inviting a bunch of people over to help us eat this. That was one of my stipulations. I'm like, I'm not cooking this unless we have people coming over to help. Cause I'm not wasting the food. Yes, the Schumacher doc comes out on the 8th or on the 15th. Oh, I didn't Next know time. that. I know, I mean, hey, Dust, we could always go back to the Circuit of Americas together. Let's be honest here. Yep. Is there going to be some kind of picnic table? Yes. Do we want to grab the table from the car or not really? Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah, because yeah, what? The pig yeah. will go on the stainless and then we'll put all the sides on that. We still also have the black table in the house too. I'll go grab that. Good one, Annie. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to cook all this stuff, but for serving, you got to plan ahead a bit, right? If you don't have a ton of space. You can check the pork in eight minutes. Checking the pork in eight minutes. Yeah, it is. That'll be a 4.30. Have you been to the track before, Dust? That is really cool. I mean, the track that they're racing this weekend, they've not raced there since 1985. It is crazy. It's like a roller coaster. Hi, Paloozer. How are you doing? Welcome, friends. And yeah, this is my brother and his partner's dog. This is Astra. She's a very good helper and very well-behaved doggo. Yeah, the pig only has a dry rub on it, Torino. No sauces at all. We have a spritz bottle that we might use. I'll probably bring it out when it comes time to start taking the meat off of the, the bones. Is you can do a little bit of the apple cider vinegar, apple juice mix, and maybe a bit more seasoning if you find it needs it. Other than that, I mean, suckling pigs are known to be a very supple and delicate meat, so you don't want to be covering that up. You want to enjoy it in all its pristine glory. Yeah, the piggy makes its own sauce. Cool dust. The amphitheater is right in the middle of the track. Sweet. And she's a rescue. They think that, I mean, for sure, you can tell the Rottweiler and uh, German Shepherd in her. Maybe a bit of Husky, too, just with some of the white markings and how her fur is. Is the skin going to be crisp? So it's not going to be like Chicharron, if that's what you're thinking, Torino. The skin on a suckling pig is very thin, right? So really the only thing it's doing is keeping the moisture inside of there. So it'll be crisp, but not like the proper light crisp and airy. I guess we'll see. This is the first time we've done it. So it's new for us too. Hey, Chaos Killer, you always smoke ribs? Yeah, you do. Ribs are so good smoked. Yeah, she is so, so good. Nice one. The boys got the table. Yeah, that's where we put all the foods. Thank you, Dust. That's another entry into the raffle for you. Thank you for gifting this up to Feral Butch. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Feral Butch. Please enjoy your ad-free viewing and all of your other special subscriber incentives. 
Hello, only deaf guy. How are you? Hey. We we were lurking in your stream the other day. <laughs> and chaos, do you smoke the whole pig for the whole day? Stream has been going for just over seven hours now. So the pig has been going for about seven hours, we can say. No, six and a half-ish. It took us about half an hour to prep it. But for the size, the 39 pounds, we are thinking about seven, seven-ish hours was the happy spot. And so far, right on track. Yeah, I'm doing good, deaf guy. Thanks for popping by. Three minutes. Oh, heck. Hype we got a train. hype train in coming. Choo -choo. That's a true true for you. Lucy and Havens, thank you for the tier one sub. B tree gifting the sub to Cook Bang. Welcome to the kitchen crew. We got Magic Cookie gifting a sub. Or no. Only saying hello. Okay, I'm trying to keep up on mobile here. And yes, I do know that's trout smoked. Delicious. You're not wrong. FCB, thank you very much. Not just 1,000, but 2,000 bits going towards the food truck fund. And I believe that may max out your entries for the raffle. So thank you very much for that, FCB. Cool dust. Maya, if I won the raffle, could the prize be given to a first responder to you locally instead of ourselves? For sure. For sure, for sure. You just let us know what works for you. I've also had some viewers say like, you know what, Kate, like don't, don't put me in the raffle. I don't want to be involved. And that's okay too. Mary, thank you for the 500 biddies. That's an entry for you. Beatrice gifting a sub to Mint and Megs. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Mint and Megs. Always good to have fellow food and drink streamers or just Twitch streamers in general subscribed here. I hope that we can teach you something along the way. Well, yeah, Dust, like some of the tracks, some of the turns you're taking at like five and a half Gs. You, <laughs> yeah, you don't know. stop. It's not like you just like go around once and stop. It's literally non-stop G's on your body. I can't even imagine how that would feel. So much preparation. And yeah, I don't think just any one person can do that. It takes someone special to drive those cars. Thank you, Maya, as well. Redeeming 20,000 of your pots and pans points. Doesn't cost you anything. That's an entry for you. Kimmers, thank you for the 500 biddies. I think we broke it, FCB, right? It's stuck at 55%. <laughs> oh, Cookie fixed it. B tree, holy heck. Nine subs gifted to the channel now. Culinary Rewind, welcome back. Cookie, thank you for the 1500 chaos. Appreciate the lurk. They're going to scrounge. Yeah, I wouldn't mind five Gs. <laughs> Thank you, Culinary Rewind, redeeming a raffle entry as well. Good luck. Have fun. Cannot wait to shake those names in. After what? After two or after three days, we're well over a hundred entries already. And then, well, might as well even it out a bit. Welcome to the kitchen crew, friendos. Timber86, Kinmeg, Kitch Monster, Magic Dwarf, and Game with Dally. And, check the pork. and we're gonna check the pork. 
Yeah, every now and then we do a raffle and then the next one we're gonna do is gonna be at Christmas time and we're already setting it up. One of the prizes is gonna be one of these. So get pumped. Your very own Cook With Kate apron. Okay, so are we just checking the temp here? Yep, yeah. if it's good then you shut it down. So we're looking for 190 Fahrenheit in the thickest parts here. Ham, shoulder. You see where I kind of poked in there and I poked in there. Very, oh! Should I poke this too, yeah. just to be sure? Almost. We can probably let it rest out. I was here. gonna say. Okay. Holy, and did you see the way that this just like came out so clean and easy? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Okay, at this time, I'm gonna just quickly go blow my nose. I will be right back. Do, are you saying, Annie, we need to make some Cook With Kate oven mitts? I like that. And OKFCB, okay, thank you so much for everything today. Hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. And maybe we'll catch you tomorrow for our menu planning stream. Okay, I'm gonna go quickly blow my nose. I will be right back. Just gonna mute. Hello, hello. Yeah, we got potatoes in here, roasted it up. Have a quick peek. Potatoes on the top rack. Not too close to the coals, so they don't get too dark too quick. Roast nice and slow at 375F in the foil packs. And then we can do the corn after that. 
Maybe I'll go grab the corn and we can dress it with some oil, salt, and pepper. And then we will do the beans, zucchini and pepper. I'm gonna make your life really good. What? You're down five people. So you really only have to, we only have to talk to Christy and Dallas. Everyone else won't be here. They're not coming? No. Oh. Ben is working tomorrow though, so we can pack up a bunch of lunches. For yes. So regardless, okay. It's okay. I'm yeah. Just letting you know, so you're okay. 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 Yeah, we've been gifting subs like crazy. Okay, let me switch up this view now that I'm back. Outside L, main S. Hello, Nike, my dude. Dust is gifting subbies. Yeah, where's my ledger? Let me check this out. Dust gifted like ten again today. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Where are you at? Where's the ledger? <laughs> Dust, you already had 11. You already had 11 from yesterday. This is Caitlin's drug ledger. Yeah. All it is is usernames, ticks, and weeks. It's like this. People didn't know better. I would have questions as well. <laughs> I swear, it's just for Twitch. Well, I have to be right. If I'm limiting the entries, I have to keep track of who, who has already had their max amount of entries. <laughs> yeah, that's to figure out if you're naughty or nice. <laughs> I am Santa. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Just wait till December, then we'll really be Santa. Okay. I am going to go grab the corn out and we can kind of prep that up, I think, together. Just go slow and controlled the rest of the day. The hard work is done. The pig is perfectly cooked. That's what matters most. Oh, hi, puppers. What? I got nothing yet. Nothing good yet for Puppers. What's happening? Wait. Do you like this? Or is this trash? Oh no! <laughs> when it pops off of the nose. Ready? Good one. You're a good catcher. Is the cauliflower edible or edible. trash? It's actually edible. edible. What? Cauliflower is not trash. You missed that one. That was really adorable. If you don't mind, Cooking Girl is asking, how much a pound did they charge for the piggy? Do we have a per pound price? Four dollars something. Four something a pound. 39 pounds divided by 180. That's not bad. And then Mish was saying she's in Denmark and theirs are even less expensive than that. So she thought what we paid was expensive. I don't feel it was that bad though. I guess we'll see how much edible stuff we get off of there and then we can really cost it from I that point. Probably. Guys, what we're thinking right now, just because the bugs are really bad since it just rained, is we're probably, once everything's ready, we're gonna build it inside the shop in a nice, safe, clean area. I don't wanna be fighting the bugs the whole time. It was 39 pounds total. We asked for a 30 to 35 pound, ended up with a 39, and <laughs> thankfully it still fit on the Traeger. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go grab the corn. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. We have smoked everything. All of the things are smoked, including the shop. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> no bad juju. Smoke cleanse.
What's the raffle draw for? So there's a few prizes. One of the sets, like the first prize, the top one is a Lego set. Is everyone is awesome is the set for pride. Second prize is a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge cookbook going with a bar cocktail set because there's a few cocktail recipes in there that are cool. And then the last pack is a bunch of Twitch stuff, some St. Jude stuff, a really nice scarf for winter time, stuff like that. If you want to see all the prizes, we actually posted a photo in Discord. I believe it's under the announcements page. Yeah, it's freaking sweet dust. The recipes in that book are very cool. <laughs> B-Town 780, how much longer on the cook? So we're just resting the pork right now, my dude. Potatoes are roasting on the egg and we're gonna be grilling the corn up right away. What can we say to B-Town 780? Um, 45 minutes, hour? Uh, yeah. 45 minutes are to you an hour? okay? I thought you weren't gonna come. Hello, Newt53, welcome. Sorry, I don't have a... I don't have a phone today, but it's the camera. Sammy's phoneless, he's saying. Okay, so let's switch this up for a sec. The pig is good and resting, though. Boom. We're over here. So this is the butter we made earlier. Doesn't look the best. Butter, avocado, basil, lemon zest, a pinch of salt and pepper. So as you can see, we put it back in the fridge to keep it fresh, right? But it's very hard. So pro tip, take your corn butter out when you start grilling your corn. And then we shucked all of these earlier today, cut them in half just for ease of eating and sharing with people. And now the only thing we're gonna do, a little bit of olive oil brushed around the outside, quick season of salt and pepper onto the grill. When your quality of vegetables is this good, you don't really need to do much to it. So I think all I'm gonna do, what I, what I like to do is just pour oil on my hand and rub the corn that way. It's much easier. Yeah, so what happened caffeinated is I was like, oh no, like I don't have a ton of butter to use for the corn, but I do have an avocado. So avocado, pretty high in fat content. So we tried something new today. It tastes super good. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. All right, oil up your hand, then we'll do a rub-a-dub. You could even do like a little squinch around like that. And then you just do this. You don't want too much oil on there if we're gonna still butter it. So that small amount of oil was enough for these three cobs. And I'll just do a little bit more. And then another thing that we thought might be good on the corn with the avocado butter would be like a sprinkling of feta on the top for sticking be so good, right? Like kind of elotes, but not. What? Getting stared at by Doggo from down below. Yeah, it's almost there. It's almost time. You're doing really good. Base plant, you're gonna go start the race now while you wait for your cast iron pork chops and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Mum is the word. I love that. That's adorable. Okay, no spoilers for the race. No spoilers for Formula One. We have not watched it. We've actually got my brother in to watching it with us too, which is really fun. Okay, quick rinse of the hands in our soapy water, and then we'll do a little sprinkling of seasoning. 
those are ready to go so simple we'll keep the olive oil out because we still have to dress the green beans the zucchini and the peppers just gonna do simple kosher salt and black pepper and just a little bit of seasoning to start some people don't even really like too much seasoning on their corn right they like it more sweet you can always add more after you can't take it away once it's on there unless I guess you washed it off but that's a bit much now some fresh cracked pep what I was feeling tired but then he's coming whether hell over high water. Boom. He's coming over. <laughs> yeah, corn is just a delivery vehicle for copious amounts of butter. Like, look how good <laughs> these ones look, too. So good. Man. And then all I'll do is I'll just keep the butter covered for us. Cover the butter. This stance right now has to be documented. <laughs> You gotta see this. There's a dog under there, but do you think that Sam, does she move? No, just step over it. Almost done. Nummies? Does it yeah. taste kind of garlicky? No, because it didn't really stir anything. Oh, okay. You can leave that there if you want. So can we start doing cornos? Uh, yeah, go ahead. We can start doing cornos. And then once these are done, they will hold pretty well. Maybe we'll put them in the H pan with the lid. Yeah. That'll be good. And then we'll get right into the veg after that. The yeah, you can do that too. Okay. Okay, Esther, come here. Come on this side. Come on this side. This is good. Let's switch up the scene. Have, have a seat. Yeah, I'll need a glove on so you can move the rack back and then put all the corn in the front of you. Oh. The top one, you're saying. I just use my hands really. Yeah. Trying to keep them spaced out as we put them onto the grill as well so it cooks even. Okay, so. <laughs> Pop that one in there like that. I think we're good to go. And we'll just give those a little rotation in a few moments. We'll bring this back forward. Close her up. We're gonna open up the bottom vent just a touch to allow more airflow for the corn to cook. Should be all happy. So inside I have the corn <clears throat> Onto it with oh, okay, word. And then I got parchment set up on top of the bench so we can put all the other sides. Okay. Okay. Yep. Go back to this for now while we're waiting. It's looking so good. <clears throat> 
now is not the time for a frog in my throat. Okay, one thing I will do is pack up this compost bag while we're waiting. The flies chicken around here right now are disgusting. They're just all sharpening their little hands ready to go. Main reason people like the egg is the ability for it to retain the heat better. I would say so, Lego coin. We've been working with our eggs or a big green egg for just over six years now. And I really have to say like the ceramic holds in the heat very, very well. And then another big reason why people choose big green egg is because they have a lifetime warranty on all the ceramic products. So if anything shatters, breaks, cracks, replaced, no problem. So that's something that I know Kamado does not offer. I've heard horror stories from people like literally a year in and their Kamado's just done, starting over from ground zero. Lego coin, what? Yeah. Cooking Girl, you had one from your grandma she brought back from Japan. Husband dropped a two by four on it and broke the lid. A big green egg? Or like just a similar style cooker? Don't kiss Auntie's hands. We're cooking. <laughs> was it a Kamado Joe then? Was it red? A big green egg thing, spacing the name, one of the originals. Having trouble because no taste for her to say. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. It was green though, probably a big green egg then. B tree, the recliner swallowed the iPhone. <laughs> you couldn't reply. <laughs> <laughs> Lego coin. I'm hoping to get a natural gas grill put in the bar backyard so I don't have to keep doing propane or charcoal, but you like charcoal best. I have to say, out of all the grills that I've used over the years, charcoal is definitely the most fun. You just don't get the same flavor from natural gas or propane, right? But I mean, the ease of using natural gas, there's something to be said about that. If anything though, maybe look at a Traeger or a pellet grill. It might sway your mind. We've been really enjoying using the Traeger basically as an oven all the time. I'm gonna eat this potato. Mmm. Mm hmm. Good potato. Not, not very far away. You never got a Traeger for the reason of pellets? You're worried about the filler in it. In the pellets, you're saying? You've only used charcoal chips and minimum propane. The pellets that we use are 100% all natural. Right? It says no additives or anything no. like that. No. You can pass me the bag if you want. So I think that's what you want to look for, right? Is the 100% virgin tree fiber with no additives. 
yeah, I think in the past, I think you might be right, is they weren't as good of quality. We've never had any issues. And then there is a really cool style of pellet they make now. It's a charcoal hickory. So there's little bits of charcoal inside with the wood. Awesome for like grilling veg, stuff like that over those pellets. They cook a bit hotter, we can say. A cheese pizza raid. Welcome, 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 friends. So many amazing raids today. Crushing me with the love. Welcome in, Cheese, one of my favorite food and drink streamers on Twitch, who I also cook his recipes over here in Canada. Detroit style pizza, life changing. Thank you for sharing that with us as well. How is your stream, Cheese? Also, can we say happy Cheese Pizza Day? Happy Cheese Pizza Day, friends. I hope everything turned out great. Is a cheese pizza raid on a cheese pizza day? They're bringing the cheese to us. They have so much cheese. Welcome in British Kai, Prince Palm, Nicole Rowe, John Yu. Good to see you. Tekken Blazer. Hello. Hello, friend. Okay. Today you did a pop-up. 10 pizzas in all. Great job, Cheese. I also want to say thank you very much for the 18 month resub. Just so you know, that's an entry into our raffle for you. Okay. Okay, look at this. Box. Look at this. I'm going away. Look at how this turned out. It's resting now, and we're going to get into it right away here. Okay, back to this. Thank you as well, Space Kepler, using your Prime Game in sub here. I know you only get one per month, so thank you for the two months in a row being part of the kitchen crew. Hello, Meat Blah. Yeah, oh my. This is a first for us. We're learning all together here today. And thanks for the follows, Dizzy OP, as well as Meat Blah. So we have Lego coin asking, when you do asparagus or peppers on the grill, do you wrap in tin foil or just open on the foil? I actually don't use foil at all. I just go directly over the coals on the grill grate. You just have to be sure that you don't cut the peppers too small and that the asparagus is placed across the grate so it won't fall through. Q Werp, thank you for the follow as well as Mrs. Chubby Owl. Yeah, we do a bit of smoke in here, guys. We are Big Green Egg Canada ambassadors. So if you have any questions about the Big Green Eggs, feel free to ask away. We are here to help you along, maybe guide you to picking one up for yourself if you're so inclined. And yeah, like I said, so the Traeger we basically used mainly as an oven and are loving that. And so the Traeger, this, extra large big green egg and then the mini max is going to be going into our mobile commissary kitchen that we're building for this stream thank you b tree it's ono ono i will take all of that what meat blah your neighbor has an xl that i borrow <laughs> every day of the week or what <laughs> So yeah, because the Traeger was loaded up with the pig, we had to turn the big green egg into the oven today instead. Thanks so much, Cheese. You're gonna enter lurk mode? Hey, I know how it is. Thank you for sharing your people with us. Like I said, I truly hope that all of your pizza pies turned out amazing today. I know how hard of work it is. So kudos to your pop-up as well. So cool that you can do that through Twitch, right? Thank you for the raid, Cheese. And Sammy was just threatening. He's like, we kind of have to make pizzas again. We have basil. Wait, 
Cheese has sent me the sourdough recipe to try. So that will be the next thing. Sourdough Detroit pizza. I just have to make sure that I feed the starter. <laughs> you were pleased with the turnout? Awesome. Oh no equals delicious. Way more, way easier to say. Doesn't this look Ono? Oh hey, you had a Detroiter even show up today. I'm sure, I'm sure you will impress them with what you make. That's always what we looked forward to when we did a, a few pop-ups on the island is like looking forward to the messages after of how, how much everyone enjoyed everything. Okay, Sammy's coming out with more of the veggies. That means the corn is almost done, yeah? Or no, we're just prepping. Okay. Take a look at this. Next set. So this is already prepped up. Green and yellow cauliflower from the farmer's market that we just dressed simply with olive oil. And I used a Marshall's rub this spice on it a potato one it says this unique blend can be sprinkled or rubbed on any veggies to bring an earthly worldly flavor inspired by japanese holiday casseroles so there's like garlic star anise clove ginger porcini mushroom powder all of the good things for cauliflower when you grill it the only thing we haven't done yet was a sprinkle of salt and pepper so that we didn't make it too wet before it went on the grill. So now we can do that since it's almost time to go on. And that way we'll minimize any flare ups cause that tastes weird. Yeah, we're kind of eating the rainbow today. Purple potatoes, green and yellow cauliflower, and then all of the different colored peppers, zucchini, it's awesome. Keeping it balanced. Oh, cool cooking grill. That's probably like the original. Imperial Kamado was the one you had. Dang. And Faceplant, thank you very much for the three month sub. That's an entry into the raffle for you. Thanks for being part of the kitchen crew. Okay, one more sprinkle of salt. Then we'll do a couple cracks of pep and toss that around. I have to say the Kamado charcoal does not smell good compared to the Brazilian egg one. Oh, the wood. It's very strong. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting smoked out. <laughs> yeah, the one little thunderstorm passed over and now it's perfectly sunny again. Like no clouds left in the sky. Yeah, this is gonna be so good. I heckin' love grilled cauliflower. So I'll put that over. And then this, I mean, the cauliflower will go down next and then this will finish with. And I don't dress zucchini early at all. Number one, it absorbs all of the fat right away. And then number two, if we season it now, it's gonna be like completely wet when we go to put it on the grill because of how much moisture is in. Trust me, you'll know when we're eating the steak. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't miss it. No. <laughs> Don't you fret. You did not miss the piggy. It's just staying warm right now. Mm -hmm. 
do you want this? Since you thought it wasn't trash. Is that pretty good? I'm actually shocked that the dog is eating cauliflower right now. The only veggie that's not trash for her. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's coming off soon. Do not fret. Let's take a peek at our corn butter while we're at it. That's, that's softening up perfectly. Nice one. I like how it stayed nice and green as well from the avo. Don't choke on it, silly. Go slow. Nice. Oh, you pulled the tasty taters off? The two egg mitts are over there. That's what you want. Give me that. That are gonna fall off? That I'm going to pull off. Okay, where are you putting it? Okay. And what do you mean by taking care? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand what's happening right now. I'm taking the plate setter off. So okay. You grill your stuff. Okay. Uh, by okay. Apparently it doesn't smell like great, right? Yeah. Close that for just a sec. It's getting crazy, guys. Keep the doggo safe. Yeah, we're going in whole hog cookie. We're almost there. So guys, see how the flames are really rolling up on the, the ceramic like that? It's not the best. So we're gonna just pop it off and go directly over the coals. We put the ceramic in so that we had a barrier between the fire and the potatoes. Otherwise they cook pretty quick and they might burn. Just wait a minute for that to cool off and then Sam will take that off. We'll put the rack back on. You can see just how hot the coals are, right? Beauty. No, I'm just going to hold this for you. What? Hey, less smoky. Okay. okay, now the cornings <coughs> can go back on. This is going to go quicker now. Yeah. 
Should I wait a minute or it's good? Holy shnikey. That is hot, guys. Because they've already kind of steamed the first part, this should not take long. Should hear the pop in pretty quickly of the kernels browning. <laughs> Leave it open. Uh, open or close now, yeah. okay. However you feel like cooking. Oh, there it is. Uh, if you want less bottom, just close the bottom. Yeah. Just have yeah. There you go. Now you have the color on it. Get my phone. Yum. Whew. And if you're wondering if it's hot, yeah. Ja, it is. Ja. Oh, it's hot. Cooking with fire. Nice, Sam. Sammy's getting that content from behind the scenes. Doing it for the gram. Woo! Okay, these middle ones are done. Watch your face. Oh my god. I'm terrified. Watch. Watch your face. We got bugs and corn popping. Next one, cauliflower. Whew. Fingies are burning. Thanks, Timber. We'll burn this cold out. Okay, ready? And then I'm gonna close this up for a sec. It's really hot. We also got a fan blowing on the coals. <laughs> Let me just stoke this fire while you're cooking. Spread them out so it's not piled up. Just do that for a moment. Give myself a break. Uh, corn, what do we want to do? Done now? We talked about H pan. Yeah. Or we can just foil it, put it inside. Timber, I am on TV doing this. Okay. It's not real mesco, it's just a green collie. I was gonna give people the option of the butter, nope. Sam. Okay. Okay. Let's open this. No fireballs to the face. I slowed it down just a bit for the collie because it will take a touch longer than the corn. We gotta get it cooked through without having it brown too much on the outside first. So yeah, that's happy. I'm just gonna close this back up again. Let it kind of steam a bit more. Thank you, Sareb. Yeah, we'll do this view just so you guys can kind of see as we're working along here together. And I will try and stay hydrated through all of this. If you can tell just by how red my cheeks are, yeah, it's quite hot standing over that. Nice, Sam. Looks so good.
there. You can tell just by the color of the coals. We've kind of simmered them down a touch. They've cooled off. Now we're just evenly cooking the cauliflower through and getting a touch of char on it as we go. Really good idea taking the plates that are off though. I can't imagine the people that don't clean that, like how crazy that would be every time for them. Oh, we're gonna get quite a bit of snow here for sure. For sure. Yeah, getting used to winter. <laughs> I'm taking in all the summer I can get, Manny. Nice, cheese. done cleaning. Time to kick your feet up. Pro, dude, I'll be doing that soon. Cheddarhead cauliflower <laughs> stream, Dad. Is that what I'm seeing? Green cauliflower, yellow cauliflower. Should have made a cheese sauce with it though. So good. So good. Titan. BRB snow dance. No, you don't. Not yet. That's way too early. No, no. Nene. That's going to be a nah from me, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost time to open again. Almost time. Yeah, Titan, please. Oh my gosh, Maya. Sharp cheese sauce with a hint of smoked paprika for the collie. It's also called Cheddar Head. Okay, you got us there. And then the graffiti one is the purple one. Oh, that's one of my favorite ones too. You couldn't even sell it? Everyone in Canada loves colorful veggies. It's a very easy sell for the farmers here usually. Okay, we're getting there. It's like browning so nice and even. Whoa, look at that one. So that's like maximum amount of charring, I would say, before it starts to taste a bit bitter and burnt. But you'll be surprised, like that adds so much flavor to the vegetable when you let it caramelize like that. It's very different compared to just steaming or even roasting. Sammy Stream Dad was saying he grew this, the yellow cauliflower one year. No one bought it at the farmer's market because they were scared of it. I was like, what the heck? Not usually a thing here. Mr. B Town is on his way. Nice one. Okay, that one's probably good. And I'm okay with like a bit of bite on the grilled cauliflower. I don't like it being too mushy. So obviously the smaller pieces are gonna be done first. Probably one of the healthiest pig roasts ever done. Like there's no bad sides. No mac and cheese, no nothing like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna take the rest of this off. Feeling good about it. I'll give it a little cover. I was gonna cover. say, if we put the lid on, it'll steam the rest of the way. Whew. I literally can't keep my hand over the grill for longer than that. And that's with chef hands. Whoa. Those are the 
I need a extend a tongue. Thank you. Can you hear the happy sizzles? We didn't have any flare ups, so we know that we dress the veggies properly. Holy smokes. Just a touch, yep. Quick close up. I'm gonna go blow my nose. Got no other choice. Just showing Sammy my hand. I was like, can you tell where the grill was hot? <laughs> Look at all the red parts. Okay, so real quick, while that's just simmering down a touch, gotta come and dress up the zucchini and the bell peppers. Just a nice drizzle over of extra virgin olive oil. Are we not making stuff for Finn to take though? Oh, yeah, I really yeah, need yeah. to cook it all. Okay. <laughs> Do a drizzle this way. Make it snow with salt. So you had to market it different, Stream Dad. That is so funny. I like how you tricked them anyways. Suckers. <laughs> it's Viking cauliflower. Of course you want this. <laughs> Just gonna do a little toss -a -roo. Peppers are a little bit more risky for grilling. They might fall through, we'll see though. I think they're thick enough though that they shouldn't. And then these, I'll just kind of do a, a toss up. Okay. Colored is way sweeter and more nutrient dense. Yeah, gotta love that. I mean, white food, what can you expect? Do you, Sama, do you wanna open the grill for me? Or are you watching? Just I got oily hands. Yeah. Did it go completely out? No. It'll relight. Oh, just switch the so placing the zucchini like flat side down on the grate get a nice grill mark on the one side depending on how hot your fire is you can maybe do a grill mark on the other side as well okay there's defo defo a friend here 
Somebody's here. Just put the pan into the grill, Maya, for the peppers. Yeah, but I do really love when they get color on them, like right over the coals. So let's leave that for now. I think I'll just leave it open. We cooled down the coals enough. I could actually leave my hand over top. Let's see how that cooks up. <laughs> Fried fingers. Okay, welcome back, Nike. You're fully back now. We put like these ones on first. Okay, not quite. We want a bit more of a grill mark before we flip it. They have these amazing things called oven mitts. Yeah, we have oven mitts. Just, I'm like a classic chef and don't really use them at all. <laughs> why are we like this? Don't ask me why we're built this way. Yeah, cook and grill. I think this is one of my favorite ways to have zucchini though, is grilled like this. Just really absorbs such good flavor. You don't have to do much to it. Okay. I'm gonna use the shorter tongs just cause they're easier to control. So a couple more minutes on the other side and those will be done. We don't cook them till they're mushy. Yay. Yay. And like I used to have to cook zucchini like this to order at a restaurant. So I have found that this was the best way to prepare it for grilling without any risk of it falling through the grate. It was very quick to flip, right? Stays put. Switching hands. And like usually on the restaurant grill, I'd actually just use my hands to flip it over. It wouldn't be nearly as hot as this. Ah. My right hand, though, it doesn't work as good as my left hand. That's the only issue. I can't. I can't look. <laughs> I'm, I'm grilling. Whew. Okay, that one worked good. One last one. Okay. Zucchinis, basically done. Nom. Curious cooking girl. I just got a gift sub from another streamer's channel that you're not in. How does it happen? I think how it happens, it's so random, is it just goes by people that have popped into a channel before. So if you've ever like been in the chat, they pull from whatever names those are. I know it is quite random though, right? Okay, I'm gonna start pulling these off because they're starting to get a bit bendy, if you guys can see. I think we can hear the live music from the stadium here. Oh no, really? Why did that happen? Even this other camera is upset. <laughs> I literally have no cameras. Um, hello? Everything got too hot. 
You can turn the fan back on if we need to. Yeah, this little guy's working. Hi, welcome back. Okay. Oh, the phone actually got roasted. And it got quite warm out though too after that cloud passed over. And then one thing I find about the grilled zucchini guys is that it also kind of keeps cooking even after you take it off of the grill. This is how she's looking. And then just the peppers left. And that's it. Okay, that actually dropped on really good. Just leave those like that. Lost one. One pepper. Two peppers. Oh no. We might not make it with the peps. Should we do like Maya said and just leave it on the pan? Uh, just pour them all out at one time. gonna close that okay almost good a couple fell through yeah sometimes it's true meat blah knows oh no it froze you got to make a sacrifice to the grill gods hey at least it wasn't the suckling pig okay I don't have another lid for that but what I can do just to keep it warm is that restart no we really wrecked it <laughs> yeah that one that is it for that? <laughs> we are frozen. Oh no. I think it was just a couple of pieces that dropped. They got lit. Guys, this is an issue right now. How are we going to do the inside stuff if the camera's not working? You want to try my phone? It's right here. It's got lots of charge. We made it this far. Never give up, never surrender. Yeah, NASA, we need the heat shield, please. the raid you lucked out we just got the camera up and working again on these peppers we're making a mess 
You came in at the right time, though. We're just getting ready to start setting up plating inside. Oh, no. Can we save that one? Yes. No! Yeah, I will. Nice sharp one. Okay, we did it. Dunzo. Okay, so I'm just bringing this in with my paring knife. Yeah. Okay. And the... And the camera. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you guys go in with the pig and set up and then I'll set the camera up after or how do you want to do it? I think that's probably the smartest. You want to know how, Maya? I think it's a bit of a terrifying situation, if we're being honest. Okay. That's how. Just watch the cord as you go in. Yeah. <laughs> the dog. You need help with that piggy? <laughs> Welcome to the shop. Some people may recognize this space. If you've ever watched a randochrome stream. How do we set this up? Probably, what way? I'll cut from this side. Yeah, That's a good good. angle. Yeah, and that's not for you. You got options. You got a chair or a bed. Look at the sheen on that thing. All right, I got the paring knife ready to go. I'll bring my cloth in. Looks like Nike out at the beach. Let's go. Sun bacon relaxer, Hearthstone. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we gotta do, guys. Let's um, take a photo of it first, complete. As we have to cut like a little window from the shoulder up to the spine and over here and then back down by the ham. And then we peel this open and we start taking the meat out like that. So you can see how this skin is kind of tough. <clears throat> we'll come up this side as well first. <laughs> well, it's just a bit like leathery, papery. Okay. See? We'll take that. Careful with the steam as well, right? Whoa. This is gonna be perfect. Holy heck. I think we did good.
good. I think we did good. Do you see those juices? Now can I get a smile? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so that's <clears throat> outer rib meat. This is the loin. Let's get the loin out. Would you like to bring a loin pan in yeah, and I'll start putting one. meats in there? Yeah. Okay. And one other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to put on a pair of gloves because it's really hot, but we want to work with it while it's hot. It also makes a heat barrier, right? One pair of gloves. Whoa. My hands are too sweaty to put gloves on now. Oh my. Oh my. Insane. Never tasted nothing like that before. I gotta get my glove on. Okay. So first things first, I think I'll just take the loin off. We can just kind of move some of this. That is so supple looking as well. So all we do, remember the uh, pork loin is where you get your pork chops from. Kind of think of it that way. Just gonna cut here. Also, here's this. This is the typical shoulder blade that would come out of the shoulder. And I'll also just slice the loin here on the end. You can already see it's pulling away there. It's very, very delicate, right? And then it's really just all about, did you hear my stomach? Yep. Bro. Yep, I'm ready. Oh, just, um, all you gotta do guys is start this, picking. Uh, yeah. And do the same here in the back and we're just gonna help ourselves to show us here. Like there and down. Yep. That'll pop up the jowl basically. Whoa. Yeah. Dog screaming. So, I mean, this is rocking hot anyway, so it has to cool off a touch before we even eat it. Insane. Yeah, dust, please. All right, guys, that's the pig. Mm. Gonna make up a plate for herself. Yeah. And then... I want to pick some of those yeah, ribbies. Yeah. The ribby meat is like so supple and succulent. And then to get into the shoulder a bit, remember I was pulling out the shoulder blade <laughs> dust. So for anyone who's done pulled pork before with the blade in or bone in, Look at how small that shoulder blade is. And you know it's cooked really nice when it just pops right out like that. That's just really hot. It's so hot that I can barely touch it with gloves on. And then all of this, so pork shoulder right here, right? So your typical pulled pork. 
And then the back side would be more like a ham. Yeah, nice. Okay, you want me to just make up a plate or keep going? No, I want you to just make up a plate and we can keep going. Okay. I'm just gonna take my gloves off then. It's a bit hot. So sweaty inside the glove. Very, very nice dissecting of the, of the animal. Thank you. And that's right down the spine, perfect. Yeah. Okay. First things first, I guess we'll just pop, pop some of this goodness onto the plate. Take a little bit from like each part, right? So you can maybe taste the differences. Like I wanted to see how the rib meat tastes. I'll do a small pile like that to start. Holy, that corn or the cauliflower is stinky. That's funny. Doing this, so I hope that the thing doesn't blarg. That's where I'm setting from. It should be okay, Bran. Couple of tasty purple potatoes. Grilled corn. Grilled pepper. Couple pieces of grilled zucchini. Couple bits of grilled cauliflower. Good to go. We're eating the rainbow. Okay, my nose is running so much. I'm gonna let you guys keep going here. I can't taste right now, so I'll be right back. And thank you, Gearbox Man. Just saw I was kind of into the meats, as you can see, but thank you for the two gifted subs to the channel. Welcome in Mash Buttons and Kenny Cola. Yeah, we're gonna taste. Give me one moment. Okay, I'm back. There's... Wait, did I did I click on that? The scene when I left, or did Sam switch it? I'm just bringing my stuff out. Okay, I understand. I was like, I don't think I did that. <laughs> yeah, the flies, right? Where did you go with the meal? There's literally like 20 in front of me right now. Gross. Okay. Let's have a close up really quick. Look at the pork, it looks so good in the grilled corn, purple potatoes, or cauliflower, zucchini, peppers. Okay, first things first, like let us, let's see this. 
should honestly be able to, yeah, cut it with a fork. Oh, oh my gosh, yum. Mmm. Like straight up, that's probably the best pork meat I've ever had. Considering it's well done. <clears throat> not now, voice, not now. We've made it too far. Okay, so that was like kind of from the shoulder part. This little bit was from the outside of the ribs. It looks so unctuous. And like feels so soft and tender. Like I can barely even put it on my fork. Look at that. Holy heck. Pop that little piece back on. Mmm. The seasoning was perfect, you guys. Not too salty, not under seasoned. Yeah. If you want to fully respect that animal, Probably no talking should be happening right now. That is insanely good, hey? Very. Really, really good seasoning. I don't think it needs an injection. You could, up to you though. Okay, I'm gonna go with this little piece. Also, I think pulled from the shoulder. You can see that bit of pink on there. <laughs> Kanara would slap her grandma to have a bite. <laughs> Please, Kanara, please. Mmm. Oh no, oh no, oh no. For sure, bee tree. The potatoes turned out amazing. Perfectly cooked through, just a hint of garlic. Mmm. Really nice flavor. Okay. This is what we're all waiting for, right? our messy avocado lemon basil butter. The seasoning was our own pork rub. So salt, pepper, cracked coriander, paprika, garlic. And then we mix it with some of the meat, meat church pecan rub. Cause it has a bit of sugar in it. And I think that was just perfect. Okay. Mmm. Thank you. That's really good. Like combining with the grill flavor on the corn, you don't even really know that there's avocado in there. I will say though, the corn absorbed a little bit of the weird flavor from the plate setter. I'm gonna wipe my face here. Have a bit of something on the side. Like just a slightly smoky, charry flavor that is maybe taken away from the butter, but that's okay. It's still really good. And as far as peaches and cream, because I know my Canadians are pretty serious about their corn, not the best peaches and cream corn. I will be honest about that too. Okay, I'm just gonna keep like picking. Let's try our cauliflower. Our crazy green cauliflower. Yeah, Kate's avo butter. Please try it. That I don't know if it was Tabor or not Torino. I didn't buy it. Mmm. The spice rub on the cauliflower is money. Perfectly cooked, just a bit of crunch still, the way I like it. Thank you for the follow, it's magic. Welcome in. We always try and be as honest as possible. Helps us, helps you guys. Hi, welcome. Oh my gosh, we got wieners. You can go in there. Yeah. I'm just finishing up. Hi, Carly. Ooh, She'll be okay. She's very, very nice. 
<laughs> He's like, I'm not moving. This we did on the collie. This is what we used, Annie. So Marshall's hot rub, it's cinnamon, garlic, salt, porcini powder, cayenne, star anise, clove, ginger. I really like those flavors with cauliflower. Okay, next one, let's try our zucchini. This was given to us from a friend's garden. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That definitely took on some of the hickory flavor from the wood chunks Sam put in. That's really nice and juicy. Good like little palate cleanser. Yeah, it was Lazy Lozies zucchini. Pepper is perfect. Super, super juicy. Just enough crunch and just enough char flavor. All in all, I don't think I would be missing a sauce. I don't really feel like I am. And we lucked out that we didn't have to add any extra seasoning to the pork. I think it's perfect. Oh, the Marshalls? It's actually, I believe it's from Portland. They also make hot sauces, Annie. Yeah, look it up. Marshall's Hot Rub and Marshall's Hot Sauce. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. I follow them on Instagram and they're always posting videos of their new hot sauces and stuff. Thank you, caffeinated couple, for the 16 biddies. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm gonna have one more bite of this goodness. Just shining. Mmm. Very, very good. Very good. Well worth the time and effort that it took. Hey, I just appreciate you guys spending the time with us every week and every day. That's what matters most to us, caffeinated. Okay, we're finishing up, friendos. Who are we gonna go raid? If anyone has recommendations, let me know. <laughs> yeah, we even finished before Finn got home. Thank you, Cookie. Thank you, Kimmers. Not used to streaming this late on this Sunday. Do we want to go see Hitch? <gasps> He's introducing Sarah to the stream, 100%. We're going to go see Hitch. He's back in Victoria safe now. Fellow Canadian. Plus, we get to go meet Sarah. Okay, I'm setting this up, friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us all day. All of the love that you contributed to us. Can't believe we're at 62% of the way on our food truck fund. $320 into our double door fridge. Thank you for that, friends. And 333 subs out of our 500 goal. We are going to see you all tomorrow again for our menu planning stream that we've been doing on Mondays. Super enjoying that. If you want to contribute into what we cook, for the stream, not just with pots and pans points. Come hang out tomorrow. You'll have an opportunity to maybe help us out with what we cook. We will be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, as always. Hope you guys have a good rest of your Sunday. If you are on holidays, don't get too crazy tonight. Don't get too crazy. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Other than that, stay safe, stay healthy wherever you are. We love you. Thank you for everything. B-Town can wave bye too. That's B-Town 780. Okay, let's go see Hitch, guys. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers and love. Take care. Bye. Sammy, say bye. Bye. Bye.